Uh, just uh, finishing up an early dinner right now. Some, uh, some macaroni. Hamburger meat. <laughs> you know how it is. There we go. So, the plan today was to do some proofreading. <clears throat> Pop over here. Boop. We can turn that off for now. Plan is to proofread and do some editing. <clears throat> There's quite a bit to do. This is a uh, over 20k short story, but uh, it shouldn't be shouldn't be too bad. It's just time consuming, but. Uh, it's good to take time on the proofreading edit. I don't know if I'm gonna play a game while I'm doing this. I usually do. Play a, I play a game or something while I'm doing this so I don't get too tired. All that kind of junk. You know, just uh, sitting there reading or writing too long. You need something to get the blood flowing. Either by, you know, taking your, your hour walk around really quick so you're not sitting at a desk too long. Or, uh... Whatever else, something to get the the heart racing and all that. But uh, <clears throat> I plan on reading a good a good chunk of this. Right now, just polishing off dinner really quick. But uh, yeah, I believe there's a uh, good amount of stuff that I have to revise in here. We got like 32 pages, and uh, it's gonna be a while. It's gonna be a while. I'm pretty sure even if I just only do this, it's still gonna take a few hours. That being said, I think, uh, I think I'll be able to maintain reading it aloud the whole time. Reading it aloud always helps, uh, find all the mistakes. <laughs> it's better if you have someone else do it, but, uh, I don't have money to make someone else do it for me. Not bad, though. <clears throat> Not bad. Oh yeah, I kind of forgot. I had Vampire Survivor still up. I turned it on so I can get the, the Game Pass reward thing. I guess for a quick, for a quick intermission, I could do the uh, Travel Five. Travel Five. And uh, Ghost Recon Wildlands. That's a uh, that's the weekly quest this week for the Microsoft Rewards junk that I do. So that's something I can do. But uh, I'm gonna turn down the music a little bit. Leave it around like ten. Just some background noise. 
But uh, we're going to try and focus on reading this for a little bit at least. I'm not sure if I want to do it like do uh do my usual minimum 5k length and then uh then take a break kind of thing. I might do something like that just so I have a chance to rest my throat since I'll be reading the whole thing aloud and doing my dumb little voices. But uh actually, let me refill my water bottle really quick. Don't worry. I brought the big water bottle to refill the little water bottle. This is not anyone going to the bathroom. I'm refilling the small water bottle with a large water bottle. It just sounds like, you know, water power pouring out noises. Don't worry about that. <clears throat> okay, so we're probably going to have to edit a lot of stuff. It's not going to just be a straight read through. We're going to, uh, we're going to read the paragraph and then correct what is needed in said paragraph. Or we might correct while we're reading it, if it's that bad. Just saying the process, just saying the process. So we're going to open up Grammarly here. You'll see the document move over a little bit. I do not use Grammarly to correct all the mistakes because it does not understand story writing. But it is good to just quickly correct misspelling or some contextual things. Uh, usually it doesn't matter too much. I, I don't use it for everything, but it's a helpful quick tool. It is very bad for for a lot of different things, though. Anyways, I'm going to actually start now. So then. This is... Naruto. 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 I can say the name correctly. Naruto. A new branch. The village hidden in the leaves is one comprised of many people. Ninja. What else do they want there? Ninja act as the land's military. Doctors and civilian. Uh, yeah. Ninja acts as the land's military. Ninjas act as the land's military. Doctors and civilians carrying out mundane or commercial tasks. Children studying to enter into one of the many fields. The leaf is one large tree with many different branches, creating new leaves to carry on the will of fire to the next generation. Though, what if a new branch were to form? What path may the leaves take? A simple little intro, but just to establish that it's a what if. More or less. <laughs> I like the autocorrect there. Roar. Just like the Spongebob thing. Rawr. Then everyone gasps. Anyways, the Nine Tails uh, roars. <laughs> the Nine Tailed Fox has been unleashed in the leaf village. Everyone, attack at once! Risen Saratobi, the third Hokage of the leaf, stands proudly leading the ninja of the leaf against the tailed beast. Fighting, they do what they can. Stall and move people in the streets. Though, as each second ticks away, the beast destroys more, kills more. Just being in the village for a few minutes leaves ruins in its wake. Just what can we do? What happened to Kushina? Minato? The old man asks the question amidst the howling of the beast. His answer is then given a bright yellow glow from atop the stone monuments of the village flashes and the beast is gone. No, it can't be. I need a team to come with me. The rest focus on efforts and saving who you can. Rest focus efforts on saving who you can? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Just read it weird. No one could have known at the time 
how events would play out. Everyone had hoped. Uh, had hoped. I said hoped. Yeah, they hyped up the beast. They're just like, yeah. You go. You go, tailed fox. We love you. No. <laughs> Everyone hoped. Everyone had hoped. For the best, after all. Though as Hirozen reached the location the fox had been transported to, it was already too late. Minoto, uh, Minato and Kushina were impaled on the beast's claw before Hurizen's. Hurizen's? I, I don't know how to pronounce the name right. Eyes. Ah, the Reaper of Sealing. Is in front of the two, and a newborn baby is below. Hurizen! Minato coughs blood, giving a lazy smile towards the third. I think I'll need you to take care of things for now. Naruto. My son. Take care of him for me. Kushina. The red-headed woman, impaled together with her husband, reaches toward her baby, brushing its cheek tenderly. I told you everything I want for you already, Naruto. It's up for you. It's up to you. That jerk. Touching my baby. Naruto, whatever happens, your power is your own. It's not for that creeper or anyone else. I can't... can't wait to see you. When you're all grown up, but... Don't grow up too fast, okay? Make sure you enjoy yourself. Make lots of friends. Try and not... Eat too much junk food, you know? Kushina's hands tenderly stroke the baby's cheek. And the ceiling che chains coming from her back clench around the fox. Minato, do it. With that, it all happens quickly. The beast is sealed within the baby's body, and Minato and Kushina's bodies are left lifeless in front of their son. Irizen sorrowfully walks to the baby. Picking him up into his arms. I'll do as you said, Minato. The rest of you. Well, let's make sure the bodies are put to rest, so none may disturb them. We have a lot of work for us in the future. Ah. Conjunction. With such a grand moment, Duh, that doesn't need a comma. Not many would know what the future would hold. Years pass. Years pass. And different events occur. The young boy Naruto is raised from baby to child. <clears throat> and so the hero married. I don't know how I was thinking about dumb fable things with that. And here is your new home. That was all the words Hirozen gave to Naruto before shutting the door of the apartment and leaving. What am I supposed to do by myself? I'm just like four years old. The young child kicks at the floor and wanders the apartment. It had room. It was on the top floor of the building too, so it had a nice view. I wonder if this is normal. Sitting down quietly on the floor, Naruto peers out the window toward the stone monuments of the village. Do all adults just leave kids like me by themselves? <laughs> it's, it's pretty normal, apparently. As soon as I started reading, old men third said I could live on my own and start going to school. I don't even know how school is going to be. A small, spiky, blonde-haired boy with no experience and no real guardians to watch out for him. Slowly but surely, he gets items set up in his apartment. Small bag filled with clothes. Bright orange. Bright oranges and blues. Making up most of them. A few toys 
play Ninja Gear, Wrong Coin Versus. Naru did not have a lot, but he had a few items from living with the Lord Third. Maybe living on my own will be fun. I bet the other kids never get to. Giving a soft chuckle to himself, the young boy looks down at his new apartment stable. Just an envelope with money in it. Eh, uh, sitting. Ugh, change that up a little. Boy looks down at his new apartment's table. Sitting there is only a lonely envelope with money in it. Lonely envelope with money. I guess I don't have to eat all the stuff he tells me to anymore. I can buy more of that ramen stuff instead. And of course, we have to, uh, we have to change the scenes. Slant. You lived and only decided to come forward now. The old man, with his eye covered, speaks harshly to the woman in front of him. He is in the side, however, waver, waves his arm to make the man lower his voice. Heh. <laughs> of course you tell me to quiet Saratobi. This information, though. You should let me raise the boy instead. He'd be much safer. If what she said is true, he probably did something because he wants to come back for the Nine Tails. Lord Third rubs on his chin, slowly nodding to himself. This information is concerning, to say the least. The other elders, it was right to not involve them. Biting on his lip, Hiruzen waves. Waves the woman away. You may go. Thank you for this information. The woman walks from the room. And Hiruzen gives a subtle nod to the man beside him. Huh. The old man scoffs and waves his finger in the air. After just a few seconds, a muzzled scream is heard from beyond the door in silence. You always were one to be subtle, Hiruzen, but unlike that Minato, you know what needs to be done, as usual. Itachi already agreed to the plan to take care of the Uchiha, but with this information, are you really going to let the boy do as he pleases? Standing up from his cushions, from his cushion, here is an assertively glares at the man beside him. Donzo, I told them both I'd provide a life for him. He doesn't need to spend his days in the Foundation. I know what you do for this village, but I give you enough already, don't I? Zanzo leans back in his seat and scoffs again. Hm. If that's what you think, fine then. I already have some rewards from our previous missions with the Uchiha. Zanzo gestures to his bandaged face. After Itachi deals with the rest, I'll have a few more as well. Why that man took out the boy's eyes and put them right back in, well, it's a mystery. Calling himself Madara. Is removing the eye and putting it back in do anything? I may need to run some experiments when we finish cleaning up. Ahem. <clears throat> ah. Hiruzen rolls his eyes and starts walking toward the door. This is unsavory enough. Do what you have to do. The rebellion will be stopped. We made our conditions with Itachi. There is nothing else left to do. We can only watch and see now. And see how both of them grow up. Donzo gives a... <coughs> Donzo gives a faint smile towards his old friend. Aren't you just a... Aren't you good at just watching? A guardian throwing... A guardian throwing a five-year-old into some apartment by himself. I have to hand it to you, Sartobi. 
You make me not seem all that bad sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, did I spell his name right all the time? I think... I think I fixed that right away. I'm pretty sure I spelled his name wrong at some point. This is Dan Zo. Dan Zo. Is that the correct spelling? Dan Zo. Yeah, that looks like it's correct. Okay, I'm just making sure. <laughs> Next page. Bang! Clack! Oh! Naruto holds his hand tightly as people passing by the street throw rocks in his direction. Come on! What the heck's wrong with you people? Uh... Yeah, I guess conjunction there. Turning on his foot, he runs down the street, turning into an alley. Puffing and puffing, the young boy puts his hands on his knees, panting. Calling me a demon? They were acting like staring at me was going to curse them or something. Ow. Oh. A little blood drips from Naruto's forehead, and his eyes glisten faintly with tears. I... I'm alright. Uh, I'm tough. Puffing up his chest, Naruto stands proudly, dusting off the back of his shorts. He fixes the collar of his orange jacket. Those people, they're just jerks, you know, Mr. Frog? Pulling out his strong coin purse, Naruto gives its cheeks a light poke, watching the coins jingle inside it. At least the ramen guy was nice. He even gave me some extra beef with the bowl. Wiping his nose on his sleeve and putting the coin purse back into his pocket, Naruto heads down the alley, looking at different pipes. What do I do now? I've only been living there a week. Kids in school just sort of make fun of me. They don't talk to me. I don't think I smell bad, that bad, right? I've. <laughs> I've been living there. Yeah, he would say a week. That's fine. Man, I always say that these systems don't understand human speak. It is not grammatically correct. Naruto quickly lifts his arms and sniffs under them, wincing his eyes. Okay, maybe I need need to do a bath when I get home. Get it, cause, cause stinky kid. Not, not bathing. Haha. Ha. It happens. It's pretty normal. For Naruto, it was just part of his life. The odd looks, having things thrown at him now and again. People talking behind his back. He did his best though. Take care of himself. And still go to school too. The usual happy kid Sasuke though, was now grumpy. Even more than before. The other students still never talked to him either, even as he tried. Even when they tried. The other students still never talked to him either, even when they tried. Oh, wait. <laughs> the other students still never got a response from them, even they tried. Just cold glares. Yeah, that's fine. Sometimes, one kid, one kid, Shikamaru, would at least say hi now and again, Naruto hoped to himself that it meant maybe he could start making some friends, something to talk, 
yeah, someone to talk to that wasn't just Mr. Frog. That was not just Mr. Frog. <clears throat> Ugh, throat feels congested already. Fallen getting to me? <clears throat> ah, oh, Pollen. Why are you such a cruel mistress? Another day. Getting up from in bed. And I pulls on a shirt and gets on his shorts. Some people on the usual path at least don't throw thing anything at me. <laughs> but they still stare funny. I haven't seen a lot of the village, though, so... Naruto grabs a small backpack, buys his futon, and pulls it on his back. Today will be my own special ninja training. I'll... I'll find a fort or something. Then the other kids will want to hang out with me. Dumb adults throwing stuff will just get jealous, too, I bet. Poor kid. Off on a new adventure. Naruto heads out his front door and starts walking through the village. The village was segmented into different districts, but it was also bigger than just the walls that blocked them in. Outside the walls had different paths to clan territory and forest pe had forest people could explore as well as trading areas. Still, the village itself was sta sizable, with woods and waterways, even with residential areas and business ones. The stone monuments even had pathways leading up above them for expansion if needed. The mountain itself also held an evacuation area when needed. Naruto, however, cared little about the boring stuff. The school had just gone over how the emergency shelters were in the monuments, though he was more interested in actually walking up them to reach the top. It's back! A man whispers softly as Naruto. A man whispers as Naruto walks by. Uh, I don't know why I put this here at all. <laughs> what does that even mean? A man whispers as Naruto walks. Don't get too close to it. A woman says the words just as... Just as softly, breaking eye contact as soon as Naruto looks in her direction. Oh great, I have to sweep again since it decided to pass through. Oh great, I have to sweep again since that thing decided to pass through. An older man says the words with disdain, grabbing a broom and sweeping right away. The whispering voices. The secret that was not was not very secret. It was ambiance to the small child. Naruto is getting used to it though. Used to it. It would not stop him from enjoying his day. Walking more and more, he slowly gets closer to the Hokage Manor. The location acted as the main office for governmental affairs in the village. Things like missions for ninja, or policies for the local area were dealt with in the manor. In... The... Manor? Manor. Just one end, right? Like, I want, like, the actual building manor. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I want. It was open to the public, but Naruto, uh, but Naruto never really went there. Now and again, he would check if he could speak to the third Hokage, but usually he was turned away. I wanted to make it clear that the third Hokage was just an actual jerk. <laughs> Uh, well, old man, Naruto takes a breath of fresh air through his nose at the Hokage Manor. Today I'm going to do some cool stuff all on my own. 
I'm gonna get right up to that spot on your big head. <laughs> the woods up there are probably cool too. The stone monuments showing the faces of the Hokage. Have a sturdy path. Climbing up it, Naruto is amazed at how large it is. No, well, this I should say is. Ugh, I accidentally keep hitting F12. Don't need to save as right now. You only came to the entrance with his class, but never got to walk the steps himself. One problem he did note was... There were a lot of steps. His small child legs were climbing and climbing, and his breath huffing and puffing. Even though that he was training to become a ninja, leg day like this was rough even on... Even for him. Then he was only six. <laughs> Still, Naruto was determined to make a cool spot for himself. To gather new friends. Well, friends in general. After what seemed to be an hour, Naruto managed to reach the top of the stone faces, walking out from the back of the first Hokage's head. He looks out across the village. It was something Naruto had not seen before. Outstretched in front of him, he could see the school, his apartment, even the village's main gate. A boat, a boat. The mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat. Taking a long, deep breath, the boy smiles with wonder, his blue eyes gazing with a twinkle at the marvel. <laughs> this spot really is great already. I haven't even explored yet. Looking over his shoulder, Naruto peers at different trees. There is a path with a few different stone. Uh, storage. There is a path with a few different storage sheds. And some building materials, too. The area was supposed to be used for expanding the leaf when needed. Though the population is pretty stable currently, so it was just a place to store building material. In my head, Canon. <laughs> huh. They got a lot of cool stuff up here. I mostly said that too, because I know in Boruto they make a city up top. That looks more modern. So I figure, yeah, they probably section that off for future development, right? <laughs> if the offer if the author even thought about the government of his world. Wood. Oh yeah. Huh, they got a lot of cool stuff up here. Wood, unattended paint cans too. They like, they got everything. Like any child without anyone telling him no, Naruto starts picking through the different tools and materials littering the storage area. Correct move. Correct move. I bet there's some... Conjunction. I bet there's something here I can use for a hideout. I mean, these planks and stuff would be good. I don't know how to use them. People do. Uh, but people do it. Thinking aloud, Naruto finally hits his hat. And against a pair of safety goggles, thick green strap and protective lenses plated right on them. Naruto, I, Naruto's eyes instantly light up and he pulls them on over his head. Wow, these things are awesome. They look like a headband for ninja. <laughs> Everyone would be jealous if they saw these. Quickly covering his eyes, he squints. The goggles themselves were not in the best condition. Well, maybe not the best, but I can still wear it like a headband. Fixing the goggles in place so it covers his forehead, Naruto probably walks off into the woods, finally remembering his goal of a hideout. All that cool stuff distracted me. I can find a cool place, then grab some paint or something. The hidden leaf is in the middle of a forest, due to develop. Due to development, a lot of the areas closer to leaf are less dense, like woods. The further away from the from main roads or the village, it becomes the usual dense forest. That's why areas like the Forest of Death exist. 
Naruto currently walks a less dense woods area. In a less dense woods area. The trees are still tall, but have enough room that he can make his own pathway. Make his pathway. Now and again, there's even a few hills to step over. Once again, his adventure feels more like a slog walking aimlessly. This time, his body is not... A strain going upstairs, at least, after some time passes. And more walking is done, Naruto does finally see a large tree by a hilly area. <clears throat> uh, excuse me. Maybe I put on too much garlic for my pasta. But garlic's so good. The tree appears dead, but many flowers litter, litter the hill around it. It seemed like the perfect spot for a base. However, a girl's voice flares up from over the hill. Oh, uh, this one. This one. What about this one? Now, this child voice is not what Naruto expected to hear from this, uh, from this area. It's super pretty, just tell me! Swallowing back, spit. Naruto could already feel his palms getting sweaty. Mom's spaghetti, no. Was this what it meant to talk to a girl? He had not yet even he had not even approached yet. Uh, okay, I mean it's a cool spot. Of course, someone, or someone else may have already claimed it. Would it really be okay to talk to her? Well, wait, she was talking to someone else, right? Naruto fidgets in place, grabbing, tugging at his shirt nervously. His body quivers a little, thinking about about the villagers throwing things at him and staring at him like some sort of monster. Can I? Taking another short breath, Naruto begins to walk up the hill. I have to do something. Or nothing will change. Getting to the top, Naruto's hearts. Naruto's heart then races. Pink hair blows in the wind. The girl, smiling cheerfully, runs. With a flower in hand, another blonde stands beside her, smirking. With her hand. On her hip. They seemed the same age, yet the blonde one seemed a little older, at least by how she was acting. Pretty. Naruto blurts out the words, staring at the pink haired girl. <laughs> and both girls turn toward it. Turn toward him. Hey! The pink haired girl waves at Naruto happily, and the blonde frowns, scratching at the back of her neck. Hey, come on, Eno. What are you doing? He said pretty, right? Aren't you going to thank him? The blonde, named Eno, The blonde, named Dino, has a blush cross her cheek. Ah, yeah, crush. Cross her cheeks, filling a soft red. Yeah, I can change that. Has a blush across her cheeks. So. Blonde named Dino has a blush across her cheeks. So. They're forming. Sighing, she shakes her head, and her head and speaks up a bit louder and more brash sounding compared to the pink-haired girl. Yeah, yeah. You think the flowers are pretty, right? Well, thanks. I grew them myself. Now, you know, fidgets rustling up her short blonde hair. Come on down here, all right? It's too hard to yell over to you from up there. Naruto runs down the hill, zooming past both girls. With both his arms outstretched, he digs his heels into the ground, stopping himself just before running over what looks to be a flower bed. Ooh, whoa, 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 whoa. 
pink-haired girl, runs just as fast to Naruto, to Naruto's side, grabbing hold of his collar from behind. Hey, don't fall over. Wobbling just a bit. Naruto falls backwards onto the ground. Backward on... Falls backward, plopping onto the ground with a pink-haired girl, falling on her butt through his side. His, you know, ha-ha hijinks, eyes wincing. Naruto lets out a nervous laugh. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Sitting himself up slowly, he rubs at the back, at his back, looking between both the girls. So, um, hey. You know, crosses her arms under her chest and nods toward the pink-haired girl. You okay, Sakura? Hey, doofus. You know, glares at Naruto. I told you to come down here, not run at full speed. <laughs> Naruto stares with happiness instead of feeling scolded. The pink-haired girl's name... Is Sakura. And she uses clean burning propane. No. The blonde, Ino, he already memorized it for sure. I said I was sorry. I didn't realize how hilly it was. Wiping his nose, Naruto stands up and offers his hand to Sakura to help her. <laughs> With the same hand, because he's a kid. Yeah. Just, uh, just the headcanon picture of it. Wipe nose. Here's my snot-covered hand. My name's Naruto. Naruto is a maki. Sakura is hesitant, but uninjured. She sighs softly and takes the hand, standing back up. Oh, well, I'm Sakura. She's Eno. This, um, is my... Well, our hangout spot, I guess. You know, scoffs, pulling a... Uh, you know, scoffs, pussing, puffing up her chest to look like a tough tomboy. <laughs> it's our hideout, and it's not that hidden if punks like you can just stumble into it. But, you know, pauses and looks Naruto up and down again. Oh, wait. You're in the group class during recess. You get into fights with Sasuke a lot, don't you? Sakura giggles into her palm and nods in agreement. Uh, oh, <laughs> Oh yeah, you're the one Sasuke is always pummeling, aren't you? A rosy color begins to fill Naruto's cheeks as he looks down embarrassed. It's it's not like he wins every time. Ruka sensei just stops us before I can turn things around. But look, that doesn't matter. You know, walks over to the to a small stump that looks like some sort of makeshift chair, and she sits down. Oh, really? Looking a bit more smug now, realizing who she was dealing with, Hina you know, waves her hand towards Sakura. Come on, come on. We don't need to deal with a loser like him. The lurchers don't even like you, either, right? I heard all you do is cause trouble. The villagers don't even like you either, right? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. This prejudice is fine. Naruto bites at the inside of his mouth. It was what he did a lot. An easy way to stop yourself from crying. Not yourself. That would make it second person. An easy way to stop himself from crying. He's a way to stop himself from crying. Easy way to stop himself from crying to make sure his voice did not shake. Uh, hey. It did not always work, the best, but well enough. I don't even know why the villagers treat me like that. Not like I did anything to them. I mean, the fights with Sasuke is one thing. 
But I just didn't like how he's looking at me is all. Uh, it's not like he would be grammatically correct anyway. It's dialogue. That's fine. Oh, well, we're chipping away, at the very least. Eno laughs, but Sakura frowns a little, looking between them both. Hey! Raising her voice, the small pink-haired girl opens up both her arms to point at the other two children. Stop fighting. He just found his way here, right? Naruto nods. And he's not doing anything to us. He just didn't notice how steep the hill was. You know, shrugs and rolls her eyes. Yeah, I guess. Sakura then clasps her hands together, looking back and forth between the two. So, stop fighting. I hadn't even really talked to Naruto before. I mean, Sakura holds a finger to her lip, quietly thinks. For a moment. Yeah, I haven't really made a friend with any boy before. Mumbling. 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 You know, shifts in her seat. Yeah, yeah, I haven't either. So, Sakura speaks up nice and loud and grabs onto Ino's hand, dragging her over to Naruto. Why not be friends? Ino rolls her eyes again and tries pulling her wrist away. Come on, I... Ino stops her struggling, seeing the serious look in Sakura's eyes. What's gotten into you? You already know the adults all don't like him. I heard other kids' parents saying they weren't even allowed near him. Ugh. Yawn. Naruto sighs, looking down at the grass. Sakura, however, keeps her eyes on Ino and squeezes at the girl's wrist. Ino, when people were making fun of my forehead, you decided to be my friend still. Biting at her. Biting at her lip, Sakura looks at Naruto, and then back to Ino. Those people bullying me, they're... And then back at, you know? Those people bullying me, they're just like the adults bullying him, aren't they? You helped me, you became my friend. Why can't we be friends with him? Naruto flinches, hearing the words he never thought he would ever hear. Was he being bullied? Bullied by the whole village? What was more surprising, though, was it sounded like Sakura was willing to talk to him. I... I mean... Naruto stutters over his words again. His first time talking to kids his age normally, and it was two girls, of course. Uh, I mean, I don't want to get you guys in trouble just because you're friends with me. Hearing the comment and looking at Naruto's big blue puppy dog eyes, sorrowfully staring down, Ino bites at her lip. <sighs> Groaning, she pushes her wrists forward instead of pulling away from Sakura. Come here. Grabbing Naruto's hand, Ino makes a unity sign. The index finger and middle finger curl around Naruto's index and middle. We can be friends, alright? My parents aren't going to tell me who or what to be friends with. I already got this billboard, bro. I may as well have you too. Sakura pouts a little, but smiles at the same time. He could have said it nicer, but I guess that works. Piggy. You know, gives Sakura a side gla <laughs> glare to the, to the final comment, but refocuses on Naruto. Ah. So there, we're friends, alright. You said the flowers were pretty anyway, right? Naruto so excited about the idea of just having friends nods his head and eagerly. Though he was talking about Sakura when he said the comment. Her pink hair was real pretty, he thought. Though he probably should not be weird, so better not to mention it. Yeah, flowers are cool. Flowers are all cool. Pausing for a moment, his eyes scan over different colored flowers, and he spots a pink one among them. 
That one. I like that one a lot. You know, gives a small huff and puts her hand back on her hip. Heh. <laughs> That's just a pink tulip. Not a big deal. But... Yeah, they do look pretty nice. Flower that anyone can grow pretty easily, really. Pretty easy, really. Anyone can grow pretty easy. I guess I don't need to really there. The day somehow went on to be one Naruto never thought to have. Talking with Ino and Sakura both. Uh, I guess I don't need both here. Talking with Ino and Sakura. Being around people that were not outright insulting him. What is more, he got to run around the large hollow tree, acting as a fort. The girls even let him walk around inside, seeing the different flowers he knew had been growing. Sakura had her... Had her small corner of flowers as well. Minutes tick away, hours pass. The sun moves across the sky, and finally... The orange hue begins to paint the land. You know, Sakura says the words timidly, putting a few of her glass jars holding small seeds. Uh, putting away a few of her glass jars holding small seeds. It's about time to head back. My mom will get mad. If we're late again, rolling her eyes, Ino dusts off the back of her shorts and stands up from her long chair. Yeah, 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 you're right. My dad'll get on my case, too. Looking over. At Naruto, she carefully places a hand on his shoulder and gives him a gentle squee- a gentle shove. Hey, Naruto, we're gonna head back now, alright? When school's not going on, we usually come out here. Rubbing at the back of his neck. Naruto was not exactly sure what else to say, adjusting his goggles. He tries his best to find the words. Um, is is it actually okay to come back? The pause in the air sits atop of both girls with a weight they could not explain. Not pausing for too long, however, Sakura gives a pump of her fist and a hearty nod. Of course, it's not a problem. Saying the words happily, Io you know, gives a sigh. Gives a sigh and silly shakes her head. What? Sakura gives her foot a light stomp against the ground. What's wrong now, Miss Grumpy? Sighing to herself. At this point, Ino gives another head shake and points to Naruto. To Naruto. At Naruto. I always get I always use two when I should be using at every time. I have to keep him a secret, at least for now. A lot of grown-ups would throw a fit if they saw us hanging around him at school. Squeezing in his shorts. Naruto bites at his lip. It made sense from what he learned so far. It would cause Sakura and Ino, pro Ino problems if people saw them together. Even if they were his friends, he did not want them to get hurt because of him. I... I mean, I'm used to it. Still, I hope we can hang out a bit at school. Naruto tilts his head back and stares with his big blue eyes. A deep, bright blue. A blue the girls could swear looked a tad different for a moment. Like the eyes were starting to swirl. Slowly, to the center. You know, and Sakura sway slightly in place, staring into those deep blue eyes. Sakura, you know, we can hang out more, right? Of course. They say in unison. Both the girls say the words at the same time, and Naruto's face beams. The girls, however, then both blink and shake their heads. Both giving a smile, they give Naruto a pet. Give Naruto another pet. 
on the back and leave the tree hideout, leaving Naruto alone in the hollowed fort. Huh. Naruto sinks against one of the log chairs and stares at a few of the jars with seedlings. They were weird when I asked that. I hope I didn't say it weird. They agreed though, right? Can't believe we gotta talk so long. Naruto keeps mumbling to himself, thinking. Thinking of the day's events, standing up from the long seat. <laughs> he leaves the fort himself, slowly walking back along the forest path. Glad that's two point pointed out uh, the more panned down path. The wind brushes, the trees, under his eyes scan over. Some of the small bugs lingering about. Not too windy today. I wonder what sort of ramen I should have today. It really is easy to make that cup stuff. And then... Clang, bang, bang. Uh, clang, bang, bang, and clang, bang. Wind brush the trees. There we go. Okay, this is around the point of 5,000 words. I think I might try to separate the story when I do the, the time jumps. And try and break it up that way. Just to, uh... Have the parts make a more logical sense to break them up nicer, but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much it actually. Naruto freezes up on his walk, hearing the sounds of clashing metal and and uh, hearing the sounds of clashing metal of hissing snake. Huh? What the heck is all that? The sound was not too far off, but the third Hokage did did ask Naruto to avoid trouble. I mean, we're close to the village, it's probably not bad. Inching his way off the path, Naruto slowly hobbles himself toward the direction of the clangs and bangs. To his surprise, they reveal a woman. They reveal a pair of women, or rather, a woman and an identical woman fighting each other. The headband... The headband they wear... From a headband they both wear... <clears throat> From the headband they both wear, they are Leaf Ninja. Leaf Village Ninja. Oh, cool. Naruto's eyes blink a few times, staring at the woman. Her hair. It's tied up in a ponytail, but it looks like it only reached to her shoulder blades, at best. A bit of spiky hair, regardless. A light black color, too. On her person, she was a... Uh, uh, she wears... On her person, she wears a chainmail top with a jacket over it. A form-fitted skirt with a lighter brown color is wrapped around her waist. Though even seemingly tight, the woman still raises her... Raises her leg to kick the air with ease, like the skirt did not impede her movement. Something Nanardo did not normally see from ninja around the school is also the leg guards clipped to the round the young woman's shins. Whoever she was, she looked like she knew what she was doing. Though her face was a bit Though her face was a bit of a frown.
Though her, though her face is... Though her face currently is making a bit of a frown. Her almost blank brown eyes... Appear so distant and sad in a way to Naruto. Maybe... Maybe I can just... Naruto fidgets his foot against a rock, taking just another step closer, and falls flat on his face, bonking his nose against the side of a rock. Uh, yeah, good, good stuff. Just, uh, just walk forward, trip on rock, get hurt. I can relate, Naruto, I can relate. The woman gave us a final kick in the ear, making the identical woman poof into a cloud of smoke. Huh? Her voice comes out a bit brash, even rude sounding, though from what Naruto can tell, that may just be how she is. Really? The woman sighs into her hand and walks over to Naruto, pushing a few bushes aside so she could stare down at him. A kid running around here, huh? I'm using this training area, kid. Getting here past your bedtime, isn't it? Naruto slowly picks himself up from the dirt and rolls out from the bushes into the cleared out training area. Um, sorry? Rubbing at the side of his cheek, he silly stares up at the woman. Did it again, every time. Every single time. I always use two instead of app. I don't know why. Sorry, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Laughing nervously, Naruto's eyes wander over the training area. A few trees look like they had been punched. A few others had kunai sticking out of them. I was... I was just going back down to the village when I heard some noises. Scratching at the back of her head. The one crouches down and grabs at the back of Naruto's shirt. It seemed to be an attempt to help him up, and he did indeed stand up. That was a tad rough. Why is a kid like you out here so late anyway? Parents are gonna worry about you. Naruto tugs at his shirt a little and shakes his head slowly. Oh, um, no, that's not a problem. I, I, I don't have parents. The woman frowns. And lets another sigh escape her breath. Guess I always know what to bring up first. Rolling her eyes. Rolling her own eyes. Uh, yeah, rolling her eyes. At herself, she slowly looks over Naruto. He had a bit of... He had a slight scrape on his nose, but no bleeding. At least you're fine. Look, kid. Stop. Pausing for a moment, she shakes her head and sighs again. I'm a ninja. My name's Anko mit ar cha <laughs> uh, I never know how to pronounce her last name. Mita? Rashi? Anko Mitarashi. Just call me Anko. What's your name? What's your name and rank? Please give me your badge number. No. Uh. Anko gives a no. <clears throat> Wait. Did I lose my place already? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. Naruto's not sure if this was the woman's way of trying to comfort him, though she at least had not run away from him yet. Um, if he had said his name, however, would she run away? I don't think I can say. Oops. Throwing stuff at myself. Anko gives a hefty sigh and stands herself back up. Can't tell me your name? Turning on her heel, she walks over to one of the wooden dummies and pulls a kunai blade from it. Think I'm gonna get all scared of you or something, kid? Yes. <laughs> Nardo says the words bluntly to Anko's surprise. 
Shoving the kunai back into her pouch, Ungo places a hand on her hip, peering back down toward Naruto. Really now? Look, kid, just tell me your name. I can just go to the school and figure out myself later if I really gotta. Poking his fingers together, Naruto's eyes wander. He looked back at the path toward the village. Escape is always an option. From a ninja, he probably could not manage it. Well, um, my name's Naruto. Naruto Uzumaki. Onko nods the words, pulling out another kunai from the dummy. Oh, that's all? Get me all worried about for nothing over here. Thought you were going to say you were like, Peter Lord's kid or something. Sucking our lips into her, his lips into his mouth, Naruto squeezes his eyes shut. Fettel Lord? Anko sheets yet another blade and finally turns to face Naruto again. This time, though, she takes a knee to get the boy to get to the boy's eye level. <laughs> Giving a laugh first, she shakes her head. Laughing first, she shakes her head. No, ki no, Naruto. The feudal lord of the land of fire. They're, like, even more important than the Hokage, you could say. You know, the Hokage. You know the Hokages, right? The Land of Fire is a title, so capitalize that. Capitalize our gains. Naruto gives a slow nod. Yeah, Grandpa Hokage. Both of them now pause, Anko seeming to be in thought at the comment. You call him that, huh? I never really see you with him. Naruto tilts his head slowly, appearing as confused as the confused one now. Well, he gives me my spending money and then does his Okage stuff. That's the sort of things grandpas do, right? <laughs> Anko slowly drags her palm across her face, sighing into it heavily. Yeah, I guess when taking care of a child, plenty of people do that for sure. I can think of at least two right now. Ditching them and doing something else is a uh, master and student special, I guess. Naruto's not sure why, but Anko's teeth look like they were starting to grind as she said the, her words. I swear that old man, standing herself up. Standing herself back up, Anko dusts off the back of her skirt, stretches out her arms. Ah, uh, look. Yeah, Naruto. You like Dango? Watching Naruto's head tilt in real time. Told Anko enough already, but Naruto still answers. What's a Dango? Scratching at the back of her head, Anko paces back and forth in place. Okay, okay, um, look. You like sweet things? Naruto nods. Okay, good. Then I'm gonna treat you to some dango, okay? Stopping on her heel, Anko pivots herself around and bites at her thumb. What the hell am I doing exactly? That shitty old man is doing what, I, what that creep did to me. But even worse, this kid's younger than I was. I know I heard about him a little, but what the hell is... Isn't he supposed to be <laughs> a village asset? Man, I hate these guys. Tentatively. <laughs> Squeezing the bridge of her nose, Hanko takes a deep breath to calm her grumbles and turns back to Naruto. Um, so, what do people even do? Closing her eyes for a brief moment, Hanko tentatively holds out her hand. Here, grab my hand, it'll be faster if I just carry you down. As far as Naruto's memory went, he had not been carried by anyone. The woman was not freaking out about him. The day was strange, yet happy already with the new friend, with the new friendships he got. And the oddities were not ending there. All right, I guess. Um, can you pick me up? Naruto reaches his hand out, putting it in on into Anko's. Naruto not ha 
having even lost all his baby teeth yet, felt small already to Anko, while Naruto thought Anko's hands felt large in his. Still, without another word, the scantily clad woman pulls Naruto into her arms, <laughs> one arm under the bend of his leg, the other cradling his head. This feels weird, rolling her eyes on co-titans, her grip, and presses her heel into the ground. Yeah, if you've never been held before, might be new. Just try to hold, try and hold still. Uh, just try and hold on tight. Squeeze into me if you need to. Not gonna go too fast, but try not to barf on me or something. Naruto manages not to barf, despite not being used to the speed. Or the falling. He holds on tightly to Anko, pressing his face against her rather soft chest. It was more physical contact than he was used to. Part of him wondered, wondered if it counted as a hug. Then the motion stopped. And he has sat back down, finally able to see again. It only felt like a minute or maybe two, and it's... Ugh. Or maybe two, and now... They stand in the village. The sun still setting, and some star, uh, and some stores closing while there's open. The Dongo stand, however, was still open, and Anko was already at the cart, ordering some of the, some from the vendor. Hmm. Naruto holds his stomach, feeling it growl back toward him. Whatever the food was, it smelled like rice, but also sweet at the same time. Plop, plop, plop. His nose was being assaulted by several flavors. Anko then comes back to him, holding two trays, each with three skewers, with balls on it. With balls on them. She hands one to Naruto, and right away he picks up one, staring at it. They smell like rice, but other stuff too. And they even have different colors. A light smile creeps across Anko's face, and she bites a red ball off one of her own skewers. Off one of her skewers. Hers are very possessive. Hmm. Ah. Pulling the stick from her mouth. For just a moment, she tugs two of the balls at once. Leaving one skewer, now empty. Awesome as always. She gives a quick thumbs up to the vendor, and he laughs, giving a thumbs up back. Come on, kid, eat up. I'm Anko, so I treated you to some Anko, too. Naruto's head slowly turns again, but he was hungry enough. He bites at three of the balls at once, cleaning off one skewer himself. Biting into the balls, it really was like rice. Yet the texture was a bit chewier than he was used to. At the same time, the sweetness had a hint of salt, and the coating almost tasted like some sort of bean that he had had in different easy-to-make cup meals. Mm, these are... good. Chewing and speaking with mouth full. <laughs> with a mouth full, Anko chuckles and waves to the vendor. He sets out a bamboo cup, and she snags it, handing it over to Naruto. Chugging down the water inside, Naruto swallows down the dongo with a satisfied smile. Wow, these are pretty good. Red stuff tastes like good too. What were you saying? Anko... Anko treating with Anko? What's that mean? The food's dongo, right? Gobbling up another three dongo balls herself, Anko chews them down and grabs some water for herself to wash them down. Ah, always hits the spot. Squatting down, she points to the tray in Naruto's hand. And... Points at the balls covered in what looks like... And what looked like a reddish brown, reddish brown sauce. This stuff, it's called Anko. <laughs> Just like, you know, those swirly things in ramen. Wait and gotta... 
just like do you know those swirly things in ramen white got the red swirl naruto nods slowly he had eaten uh, he hadn't eaten ramen enough to know that that much by now yeah what about him anko puts a hand on her head head and rustles up his hair well that stuff's called naruto like you <laughs> whoever named us guess they both really liked food Guess they both liked food. <laughs> but some people are just like that. Guess because of my name, I end up having a craving for Dongo. Anko is a common filling her sauce for it. It's a bean paste, more or less. You can do a lot with it, though. Craving. It's craving, right? Yeah, that's correct. Conjunction. Okay. Fix it up, fix it up. I wonder how long this first part was. Naruto. Walks himself over to the wooden bench and plops himself down. Walks over to the to a small wooden bench and plops himself down. Neat. Stares at the food, thinking, yet eats up another three at the same time. Anko giggles at herself, watching the child stuff his cheeks and sits down next to him. Stalling the next three down, Naruto looks up to Anko. I wonder why I was named Naruto. Do you think my parents named me that? Who named you Anko? Is it your parents? Anko leans back in her, in her seat and finishes off the last of her dongo, nodding slowly. Stalling it down, she sips at her water in a moment and finally speaks up. They passed away during the third ninja war. Happened to a lot of people around my age. My parents are both ninja. Parents are both ninjas. Though I didn't know them too well. I suppose when I started learning how to be a ninja myself, my sensei was kind of like a dad to me. Squeezing her eyes shut for a few moments, she shakes her hand. But not the point. I don't know if my parents were in into it or not. Maybe some relative came up with it. Maybe I popped out my mom. While she was eating dongo. Who knows? As for you, spinning the dongo stick in her hand, she gives Naruto a small flick to the forehead with it. How the heck would I know why you named that? Naruto shrugs and rubs the top of his head where he was flicked, finishing off the rest of his own dongo. Finish off the rest of his dongo. He gives his belly a few pats, and then finishes off his water. Well, thanks either way, um, Anko. Pausing for a moment. Pausing for a bit, Naruto fidgets with his goggles. Most adults don't really talk to me, so thanks. Silence then fills the area. Anko takes the wooden trays and bamboo cups, and brings them back to the vendor. A slight wave. Finish payment, and she sits back down quietly beside Naruto. Slight wave. A finished payment. Yeah, it's fine. Where she was now in her ninja career, she was often not in the village for long. Only just recently was she thinking about possibly being an instructor, instructor for a few classes. She figured she would never run into a kid like Naruto. Rubbing out the side of her neck. She can still feel the mask there, the the mark there, the memento she had from her sensei's experiments. People usually kept away from her because of her oddities. She was like a small version of her sensei after all, snakes constantly around her. A taste for blood, maybe she was not as scientifically smart, but she didn't cause people to look at her strangely. 
though. Could she say that was enough to empathize with the child with the child beside her who was just being neglected? She barely had any idea how to handle her companions, let alone children. Man, I really make myself deal with things way over my head. Rubbing at the back of her head, Anko lets another sigh leave her lips, and she looks down at Naruto. Hey kid, you're over by that practice area again. I train there a lot. Feel free to say hi. Pressing her hands against her knees, she stands herself up and offers her hand again. It was probably what adults should do for a kid, even if it felt a bit embarrassing. Now come on, get up, you brat. Let's get you home. It's getting dark enough. I'll walk you back, all right? Then, slam. The door closes, and Naruto's back where he belongs, alone. Stepping through his apartment, he looks at some of the discarded ramen cups on the floor and sits down at his table. I had a lot of fun today. The words come from his lip, from his lips as a light whisper. The moon just... just lifted so he could barely, barely see inside. Reaching at the center of his table, he clicks on a small frog lamp he got not too long ago. I kept things at least visible. The other lights are too bright right now. I wonder why Anka didn't hate me. Okay. The other lights are too bright right now. Pausing for a long moment, Naruto stares at the frog lampshade. I wonder why Anka didn't hate me. Twiddling his thumbs at the table, Naruto stares at them. Yet, he held a hand. He interlocked fingers for a unity side. Unity sign, touching another person without trying to punch at them. He did not think he would have physical contact with people in such a gentle way. Maybe things will change, at least a little. Okay. So how long is that? That's like 7,500 words. Okay, so we're going to try and break that off into its own part. Into its own part. Okay, so... Ugh. To replace that with this. Save. Okay. Then I need to go back to my stash. Going to delete what is in part one, part two. I mean, part three and part two. Wait, yes. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that, though. Okay, so part one is done. One and done. Boom. 
one and done. Uh, stretch out. That was like an hour and 30 minutes to get through like 8,000 words. That's pretty okay. That's pretty okay. We're like halfway there, you could say. Uh -huh. Okay, so we're going to be starting from page 12. And I think we're going to page 20. Yeah, I think we're going from page 12 to like 20-ish, or maybe 22 or something like that. But uh, that'll be the next point to break off and make another make another segment there for the full proofreading edit. But uh, for right now, this moment, I'm going to take a small break. It's been over an hour. I like to just take a second to, to walk around for, for at least like a minute and refill my water, go to the bathroom and all that. So take this as a brief intermission. So for anyone watching, go grab your own water. Go grab... Whatever you need. I'm going to turn the music up a little and throw on my white screen. I will be right back.
Oh, all right. Hello, hello. Hello, Mario. It's me, Mario. Turn that back down around like there-ish. Yeah, this is one of the latter ones. Like right there. Okay. So, we, uh... I'm gonna do a... Okay, update them, and let's get back into it. Okay, clang, squeeze, thud. A year flew by, but Naruto's life did not. Puffing, puffing, he gasped for air, squeezing at the kunai blade in his hand. It had just been one year, but so much had happened. Visiting Ino and Sakura more, speaking at Anko's training more. Even if it was just a few connections, he suddenly had things in his life. Now he had a goal. C come on! Squeezing at the blade in his hand, Naruto stands back up, looking Anko in the eyes. She was rather tall compared to him, but he could still stare up at her. I can get it right. One more time. A goal he had a he had a goal to become a real ninja, a ninja like the Hokage. No, the Hokage. Naruto needed training to get into the Genin training school. So, the only one willing to train him was obvious. He started to learn himself at first, but apparently he was so bad at it, Anko felt the need to step in. <laughs> that being said, she's not exactly gentle. But Naruto had no intention of backing out, just because the training was hard. Scoffing under her breath, Hanko readies her own kunai and beckons her hand at Naruto. <laughs> Good, no people of mine would give in that easily. Come on, I'll take you on. Till you black out. Black out he did. Several times. Naruto would lunge at Anko, sure of himself that this time he would get a hit in on her. Then, he would find himself eating dirt. It was only about... Oops. He was only about seven years old, so not like Anko was expecting much of him. At the time, Naruto expected something of himself to keep... At the time, Naruto. Time, Naruto. At the time, Naruto was the one expecting something of himself. Keep getting better, even if Anko was just humoring a child. He really did want to learn more. That. again. The weary Naruto stands and stands again. Anko would then throw him back down. Still, even she could tell, slowly but surely, he was getting better. If he kept at, if he kept it up by the time, he was, if he kept it up, by the time he was a teenager, she was sure he would have a few advantages compared to the other students. Thud. Anko smirks, watching Naruto fall face first into the ground yet again. As much as they both thought, 
for now. I should probably just change it to thought. As much as they both fought, for now, the result would remain the same. Naruto. Anko tries to... Tries not to snort through her nose, but the mocking tone is pretty clear. <laughs> I don't think you're going to get much headway today, so how about we head back? Both Anko and Naruto were a bit alike in a variety of ways, though the main part was personality. Anko could be a bit odd, sure, but she still had the spirited, stubborn prankster vibe that Naruto did not mind. At this point in his life, though, Naruto only really used pranks to get some attention. Usually the pranks were tame, too. He just wanted some of the adults to talk to him now and again, even if it was yelling. Those two traits aside, Anko and Naruto both were also kind. He lasted longer than last time, Anko scoffs from her nose, still, s still stifling a laugh. So, how about I treat you to dinner? Where you want to go? It's not noticed. This has happened a few times now since their training started. Really was becoming a highlight for Naruto. It was becoming a highlight for Naruto. Not just because he got free food. He got to eat with a grown-up that actually talked to him. Um, ramen... Naruto pauses for a moment and nods his head, standing himself up. Ichiru Ichiraku, the one close to the main road. Ango smirks and nods her, nods her head. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. You always want to go there. Ango grabs hold of Naruto and lifts him up in the air. Lifts him in the air. This too was just part of their routine now, swinging his legs over her neck. Anko lets Naruto take a ride on her shoulders. The boy's hands rest upon her head, and he does his best not to squirm around. Heh, <laughs> you're getting bigger. Probably not going to be able to do this too soon. Uh, probably not going to be able to do this soon. Naruto rolls his eyes gingerly, poking at the side of Anko's head. What you talking about? You're strong enough to pick up an adult. Anko rolls her eyes right back, jumping from tree to tree as she leaves the training area. Yeah, but I wouldn't hold them on my shoulders. I'd have to carry them in my arms, or over my shoulder. Whatever works, really. Some ninja tie the people to their backs like a backpack. Nara gives a quiet laugh to the ramblings. Oh, Anko clears her throat as she slides down the Hokage stone faces. Why Ichiraku, anyway? I get you love ramen, but... You shouldn't eat it all the time. Naruto sides and holds some of Anko's hair between his fingers. You have Dango too much then. Clearing her throat, she steps back onto one of the ma many roads of Leaf Village. Point taken. But come on, I'm serious. Other ramen places around. Frowning a little, Naruto leans his chest against the back of Anko's head and tries to peer over her to look her at her eyes. Well, the owner, he's nice to me. Most adults aren't like you. Usually they throw stuff at me or tell me when I try to buy and buy food with the money the old man gives me. Or tell me to leave when I try and buy food with the money the old man gives me. Anko's eyes twitch hearing the response, but she gives a quiet, annoyed laugh back in response. Is that so? <laughs> you, uh, you should point out to me sometime who those people were. Naruto non sitting back on his Anko seat. Alright, I can do that, but... Pointing now, Naruto sees the ramen shop in sight. We're here. This place always tastes great after training. I want to get a beef bowl. Waving off the comment, Anko sets Naruto to the ground carefully, and they both walk into the shop. As Naruto said, the shop owner, as usual, greets them with a smile. The sun had not gone down yet, so the bar-style seats were all open. Both sitting themselves down, the two order up ramen. Anko paying as usual, they eat quietly, Naruto happily slurping up his noodles, eating the meat. 
Hand chopping on Naruto. Danko is now the one feeling different lately. She was getting involved too much in something she should not. Was she getting involved too much in something she should not? No one said she could train him. She just decided to start. It was fun. Or rather, it gave her some sort of purpose. You know... Anko finishes drinking down the last of her broth. Setting the bowl down, she looks at Naruto, trying to slurp down the rest of his... Trying to slurp down the rest of his just as fast. I climbed the ranks a bit as a ninja. Uh... Group will say one to recruit me for the skills. <laughs> the old man offered me a special rank as well, where I'd be able to do specific missions and also teach sometimes if I wanted. Never thought I'd be teaching a brat. Never thought I'd be teaching a brat like you, though. Naruto places his bowl down, bending his mouth from the hot broth. Ah, hot, 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 hot. Ungo smirks and pushes him a glass of water. He downs it and slams the glass down as a, slams the glass down. Hey, I'm not a brat. I'm getting better. I'll be able to hit you for sure sometime. Anko chuckles at herself. And rustles the top of Naruto's head, messing up his hair. Yeah, you will. Cause you got a teacher who's not a brat, you brat. But, you're my brat, yeah? Naruto pouts a little. And Anko stands herself up. Uh, and stands up, leaving some money on the counter. If you manage to keep improving at the rate you are, I'll teach you some jutsu, I know. <laughs> I bet you could impress a lot of the kids at the academy, knowing some advanced jutsu before you even start training. Or ninja training. Naruto beams with excitement. The two had formed a bond over the past year. Knowing or not, though, it was hard for both of them to say what exactly that bond was. Slowly those bonds change. And the fire grows hotter and brighter, allowing the leaves to float even more in the air. Years once again begin to pass. And Ino and Sakura both still kept friendly toward Naruto, the three of them enjoying the secret base they had created. And eh, enjoying is fine. Seeing how Naruto had been training, the girls even began to do training of their own. Yes, that one little spark can make an ever-growing flame. Anko keeps up her teaching, Naruto keeps up his training. Bonds go stronger, people grow closer. Time keeps moving. Naruto, you idiot! Naruto is now ten years old, and had entered into the Ninja Academy, ready to learn more, and finally become a Genie. When he could take the final exam in a few years, However, the teacher in front of him, yelling at him, was hampering some of his progress. Aruka is a tuning of the lead. Many of his rank end up becoming educators if they rather stay off the front lines of battle. Now, to Naruto, his teacher was not bad by any means. He was doing general education. When he was doing general education, he was also a teacher at times. Though Naruto thought he was fun to mess with. Aruka is a younger teacher, and... A bit of a pervert from what Naruto can tell. Messing him with messing with him tends to be too easy. So who would let the chance pass by? You know, you got a point. Who would let the chance pass by? Today Aruko's yelling and lecturing Naruto about how not to let snakes into the teacher's bathroom. <laughs> of course, Naruto is not listening to the lecture, but it was probably about that. And for the last time, stop using jitsu, not covered in class. I don't care if you can do it or you can't do it. The fundamentals are what's important, and those are the things you still seem to struggle with. Aruka's voice was scolding, but for better or worse, Naruto could tell he was being sincere. Even if Aruka looked at him oddly at times, he treated him pretty nice. 
pretty nice. Like, Naruto even put him on the mental list, the list of the few people that actually acknowledged him and talked to him. Oh, come on. Aruka sighs, shaking his head. You're listening, right? Naruto is not fully listening, but he got the gist in the last parts. The scar on Aruka's face looks cool, though. Well, if you can stare at me, how about taking some more notes in class? Naruto sighs and puts his hands into his orange... ...into the pockets of his orange hoodie. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Don't do it again, blah blah blah. Be a better student. You just don't get it, Aruka-sensei. I know I can be a good ninja. You've seen the stuff I can do. This fundamental stuff is just boring. Naruto kicks his foot at the ground, letting another sigh pass his lips. Aruka, on the other hand, places his hand on Naruto's shoulder and shakes his head. Naruto, come on. Even you have to admit that you're, you lack chakra control. Rustling the top of Naruto's head, Aruka gives another sigh back. Look. Just try and stay out of trouble for me. At least if you're going to play your pranks. Try not to get the other teachers involved. I'll treat you to ramen sometime if you can manage it. Splash. A bucket of water splashes over Aruka's head before and before Naruto had and before Naruto. His two female friends drop down. Sakura smirks and grabs onto Naruto's wrist. Come on, knucklehead. Let's get out of here. Ino grabs at her, at her eye and sticks out her tongue at Aruka. See ya, lamer. Leaping out the window, the trio now darts across the leaf village. Rooftops, hearing in the distance, yelling Aruka behind them. <laughs> Got him. You know, brushes a finger under her nose, smugly, as she keeps her running pace. He always falls for that one, I swear. Ah, uh, Naruto, you have taken forever, so he came to pick you up. Blushing a little, Naruto pulls his arms, arm from Sakura's grip and keeps to his own pace beside them both. Uh, yeah, thanks for that. He was talking my ear off again. He's nice enough, but he sure does waste time. Sakura nods. At herself. Uh, no, Sakura nods at herself, sagely running as she holds her chin. No, no, no. I don't want to change that. Sakura. Sakura nods at herself sagely and holds her chin in agreement. Yeah, he can be a bit stiff, that's for sure. These girls were now, well, were the same, but different. Naruto had been around them for a bit now, but they were a bit rougher around the edges than before. Maybe he was to blame for that. Both Ina and Sakura now had matching goggle sets to go with Naruto, too. Google, yeah. And matching Google sets. And matching goggle sets to go with Naruto. Explain. Both Sakura. Both Ina and Sakura now had matching goggle As if to show his influence. Their way of playing ninja and training in a way. Also just to show that the three of them stuck together. Both were what most would call tomboys. Sakura with... With her short pink hair. A small ponytail tied back. And a small ponytail tied back. Her hair was about neck length and... Uh, Round where she normally kept it nowadays. 
Ina was growing her hair out a little more. It reached her shoulders, but she clips the left side back, letting her... Letting... The hair on her right side... Uh, letting the hair on her right side over part of her eye. Yeah, That right... That sounds wrong. <laughs> Ina was growing her hair out a little more. It reached her shoulders, but she clips the left side back. Keeps the left side. Clips the left side, letting the hair on the right side. Okay, that makes more sense. <clears throat> it reached her shoulders, but she clips the left side, letting the hair on the right side cover her. Cover her eye. Yeah, that's that's better. That is much better. They both had their own style. They both had their style about them. They both had their style about them, Hina still being the louder, more outgoing one, while Sakura seemed to be quieter, but got louder around people she could trust. Still, another part of their little group was having something orange on their person. Ino had an orange hoodie, like Naruto's. Short-sleeved with blue shorts under. Sakura wears a... later blue top with an orange flowing skirt for her bottoms. Though the skirt has built-in black shorts, so she could use it on training. To the locals, the group is more like a local gang of pranksters causing trouble for the village. For the three of them, though, it was like them showing their unity, the bond they formed over the years. Finally, Eno dusts off the back of her shorts and stretches her uh, and stretches her back, looking down across the village. The three of them got to the top of the stone monument. It would not be far now until they reached their base. So, Naruto, that snake staff, you know, inches a little closer to Naruto. Inspecting him up and down like he was hiding something. How the heck do you do that? Do you have a bunch of them in your clothes or something? Naruto nervously laughs and pivots on his heels, starting to walk down in the usual path. Nah, that's just part of the jitsu, um... Naruto pauses, closing his eyes, trying to think. How did she say it? Um, you're making the chakra and your body condense and take the form of what you picture, and, well, learning to control the snakes lets you make your chakra take on their form. Sakura sighs and shakes her head, slowly following behind the two. Yeah, that doesn't sound right. Your teacher probably made you make a contract with a snake, dummy. You could make clans of snakes, but... Making them physical would be a different story. You'd need amazing control, or your body would have to have some special chakra in it or something. Naruto rubs his shin at the words, thinking about the time Zanko would grab a, a weird tattoo on her neck. I mean, I don't think me or her has anything that special. <laughs> the point being that the curse mark gives pretty much sage jutsu. Where Naruto has the tail beast, so they both do have special chakra in <laughs> Naruto's voice wanders off, thinking over his own... Thinking over... His comment. Well... Whatever. Jitsu can do weird stuff. Ina's been doing a lot with her plants, and you know how to do some... Some of the illusion stuff. Sakura sighs again, shaking her head. I told you before, it's Genjutsu. <laughs> Crossing her arms under her chest, Sakura shakes her head more to herself. I swear, I know we all mess around, but you guys both still do your reading and homework, right? You know, Naruto stare blankly at Sakura. <laughs> a long pause stands between them, making it rather clear to Sakura that she was the only one doing that. You actually do all that stuff? You know, says the words with a groan in her throat. Look, I don't got time for that junk. What are the books going to teach me anyway? I've been learning my own jutsu with ones with my flowers. The books don't teach anything like that. It's just it's all like blah blah clone jutsu. 
Sankara sighs and crosses her arms under her chest. Harder than before, if possible. It tells you... It tells you how to do things like release Genjutsu too. Among other things, it's pretty important. Sighing a deeper sigh, Sakura lowers her head down and grips at her. And grips at her fist. Not like I want to read it either, but I'm not gonna make myself a dummy like you two. Luckily, Sakura's inner monologue cannot be heard. <laughs> well, whatever, you're both learning something, I guess. Still, the clone jutsu is usually used for the final exam, so remember to try and learn it. Sakura's eyes now fall on Naruto. That means you, knucklehead. Naruto groans and plops himself down on his usual stump. They had finally reached the base. Look, we made it to the base. Let's not worry about that. I got plenty of jutsu. It'll be fine. Picking at the side of the stump, Sakura glares at Naruto. Yeah, maybe you do, but your control is terrible. You either put too much or too little. How much chakra do you have? <laughs> How much chakra do you have to have so much trouble with it? Ina walks into her small flower base and grabs out a few different flowers that had been pressed and dried. Walking back out with them in hand, she smiles towards Sakura, beckoning the pink haired girl. Come on, forget about that. Not everyone's little miss perfect like you with chakra control. Tossing the pressed flowers up in the air, Rina waves her hand through them. As they fall, catching them between her fingers, like the flowers with throwing needles. Check out some of the stuff I've learned with my control instead. You think Narita snake things cool? Well, pulling her hand back, you know, aims at the log, not too far away from the group. The log has indents from fists and feet, having kicked and punched at it so much. This time, though, Eno aims her needle like flowers. Lunging her arm forward, the flowers slip through her fingers, flying through the air. They pelt the log, and Sakura is first to notice. As they stick into it, they seem to leave a substance where they... Where they hit. A yellow-like substance. Akin to wet pollen. That is akin to wet pollen. I call this... This my stem shock jitsu. Pretty simple. You know, nudges her head toward the log. Naruto and Sakura both watch as it lightly sparks the spot. The stems of the flowers had hit. These are a special type of flower. We have plenty of weird ones. This one releases a small shock. My dad says it stores electricity or something like that. Putting her hands on us on her hips proudly, despite seeming to not know all the knowledge, Eno smiles. So these flower stems are pretty hard. These flower stems are pretty hard. Just snip the stems, and they can be used as weapons. The electricity is stronger at the root, so I can just cha charge some water chakra into it to make it flow into the person. Make it flow into the person that hits. Then, you know, steps up close to Naruto and opens her clenched fist. Zap! Gets zapped real good. <laughs> It works right if I, I think, uh, if it works right, I think it can paralyze someone for a bit. Sakura walks over the log and looks the flower up and down, at the flowers, up and down. It does seem like it could do some damage at least, even if someone blocks with an arm. It could paralyze the arm for a bit.
Sakura rambles to herself about possible ideas. Naruto. Uh. Ah, yawn first. Give big old yawn. Ugh, that is a that is an intense yawn. Ugh, stretch, stretch. Too many yawns now. Might have to play a video game. Okay, where did I leave off? Uh, Sakura rambles to herself about the possible about possible ideas. Naruto runs up and grabs Adina's shoulders, giving her a shake excitedly. That's so cool, you know. How the heck did you throw them that good, though? How do you think did you throw them that good? I feel like I suck at throwing kunai. I even practice a lot. You can even charge elemental stuff into your... Into your jutsu, though? I can't even do that. Sakura frowns. While Lino is still proudly smiling, feeling Naruto's praise. You know, Naruto. Sakura pulls her goggles down, letting... I wrote Googles again. Yeah. She's Googling it. Don't worry. Googling now. Sakura pulls her goggles down. Over her eyes. The lenses are a bit bigger than Naruto's. I have to show off. Oh, she was the cliché nerd of the group. If you read things properly, I'm pretty sure you use Yang Release. That's the type of chakra that deals with life, usually. It's not part of our elemental wheel. It stands outside it with the Yin Release. Naruto sighs, hearing in another lecture, but this time from his friend. Yin is shadow, where Yang is light. Whereas, Yang is light. Apparently, these two are not used that often in our ninja world, though. Or, if it is used, it's usually used with hidden jutsu, so one's not publicly shared. As in, they're usually hard to learn unless you make them yourself. Or find some forbidden scrolls. You know, and... Naruto are already gone, leaving Sakura in the death <laughs> dust. She looks back and forth and only sees a small snake staring back at her. Hey, Naruto. You know, hops forward, stomping onto the grass, her hands in her pockets. Yeah? Naruto fiddles with his goggles, trying to adjust them properly in place. What's up? Crouching down, you know, gently grabs. A wildflower from the ground and inspects it closely. Where Sakura catches up, how about we play a little game? Naruto rolls his eyes and straightens up his stance. That just means you want to train, right? I don't know how much I want to get hit by your flowers. Giggling at herself, you know, shakes her head and takes out a kunai from her pretty pocket. Nah, I'm being serious. A real training session. Naruto looks back. Uh, looks both ways, searching for Sakura, yet still does not see her. His face was a little worried, though, looking at the kunai. You know we're not supposed to carry around tools like that till, we're, till we graduate. If we do, we're supposed to use one of the actual training fields. We could get... Yeah. 
You know, rocks right up to Naruto and presses her palm into his mouth, shutting him up. Hey, come on. Don't be, don't be a Sakura. Listen to what I gotta say first, anyway. You know, spins the kunai around in her hand. Backhand it. Naruto nods, and slowly, still appearing a little worried, yet also excited. We see who can hit the other first. Whoever does, wins. We'll just say, you know, no cutting off limbs. No going for the head. If we get cut, it should be on legs or arms only. And... Keeping my continuity correct. <laughs> and, you know, pauses and looks over Naruto. And just looks over Naruto. We bring in ninja tools to class. Not like we don't got them. You saw the log at base. At the base. I train there with tools anyway. The idea that getting... Cut for the so-called game, which was training, sounded a bit much already. Still, Naruto could not exactly back down from a challenge. Fine. Yeah, that's funny. That's a... Uh, it's terrible misspelling. <laughs> Fine. His words muffled it. Oh, wait. No, I forgot. It was supposed to be like that. You know, walks right up to her and puts her palm into his mouth, shutting him up. Yeah, yeah. His words muffled into Eno's palm. She lifts it off. I said fine. I'll take you on. But you better not cry just because you get cut. You got cut. Get cut. Get cut. Yeah. Don't get cut. Kids are going to cut each other. A bunch of ten-year-olds with knives. What are you going to do? Eno smirks and takes out another kunai from a hoodie and tosses it over to Naruto. Fine, I can say the same to you. Don't go whining to Sakura for to bandage you up if you get hurt. And don't tell your snake lady about this either. For better or worse. Eno did not want the adult... The adults to know about the situation. And she did not want Sakura to either. That meant they would have to finish this fast. Nano grips the kunai in his hand and walks a bit away from Eno to take his stand. Alright, we'll both stand on our sides. The first to get hit loses. Are we just doing taijutsu? You know, taps the hilt of her kunai to her chin and slowly nods. Yeah, we don't want to cause any big scene. Let's stick to Chaijutsu. And, you know, runs over to Naruto and holds out her index finger and middle finger. Forgot something. Naruto smirks and does the same gesture back. Their fingers interlace and they make another unity sign. This time to show they are going to fight on equal terms. All right. Naruto spins the kunai around his finger and backhands it himself. You know, now in her place. Wait, what? what? Yeah, now your place, you know, huh?
Okay. Naruto spins the kunai around his finger and backhands at himself. Ino gets into her opposite spot and smiles toward... And smiles at Naruto. The two look at one another and lower themselves into a fighting stance. A simple short squat so they could run in any direction quickly. Ino clears her throat, clenches her kunai, and begins the count. One, two, three, start! As the one starting the count, Ino decides to launch the first attack herself. Dashing toward Naruto, she squeezes her backhanded kunai and swings it forward. The kunai zips through the air and flies right past Naruto's hair, clipping a few strands as it cuts. Luckily, Naruto had, our, had, def had decent reflexes. He managed to dodge the attack by crashing down. Still, Ino is not going to let up her assault. Reaching Naruto, she brings her left fist through the air, attempting to jab Naruto in his right hip. Naruto, however, had been training with Anko long enough. Anko was a teacher that was fine playing dirty, even with someone she was training. For better or worse, it's on Naruto had to deal with a variety of stressful situations. As if it was real combat, watching the fist... Watching the fist drag through the air. Naruto twists in place, spinning on his right foot. Then, with a quick leap, he bends his left leg and runs it through the air, kicking Ino's head aw hand away. Ino is no pushover, though. She slides herself back, avoiding the full force of the kick, and quickly grabs another kunai blade from her hoodie pocket. Throwing this right at the ground, Naruto scoffs for a moment. Looked like an obvious trap. He was a bit dumb. He could admit that, but not even he could fall for something so simple. Jumping back, however, he feels a cord dig against his back, making him flip over face first in the dirt. What? <laughs> Looking at her target in the dirt, he now scoffs and flexes her finger, showing a thin wire connected to her First kunai in the, in the one in the ground. <laughs> Ninja tools are always important. More so, more so, if you're not physically strong as your opponent. An acknowledgement of his strengths, Naruto was hoping would not hurt so badly. Now then, just keep staying still for me. Grabbing the kunai embedded in the dirt, he now runs uh, up to flick and... Uh, do that. To the fail. Yeah, to the fail. To the fallen. Naruto. <laughs> Runs up to the fallen Naruto, prepared to plunge her blade into his back. That wasn't part of the deal, you know. I was actually the assassin. There's the real villain among us. Among Goose. Or something. Hell no, come on! Naruto shouts to give himself energy and courage. Brushing his eyes against the dirt, he shocks him. He shoots himself back, feeling the wire start to rip into his hoodie. Damn it, get this thing off. Get rid of this thing, is what I mean. Shaking off his... Shaking off his fall, he squeezes his kunai and cuts through the wire. Though, as it falls, Zeno is already in front of him again. Now he stood between Eno and a tree with a kunai in it. These types of situation are what his teacher on Anko would call shit. <laughs> Still, Naruto was a fast thinker, leaking, leaping up into the air. He presses his foot against the kunai in the tree and leaps up from it to land gracefully onto a higher branch. Even with the difference in location, Naruto could hear Ino's groan. He still didn't know how to climb up trees like other ninjas. As other ninjas did. But he did know how to jump around. Some of his pranks helped him with this skill. Sorry about that, Ino. Can't give you the easy way out, you know? Leaping from branch to branch, Naruto creates a distance between them. 
and leaps back down to the forest floor. Nino's eyes lock with his, and they glare between each other. For a sparring match. It was fun for Naruto. Both of them seemed to be able to keep up with each other, at the very least. It was easier on Naruto than just always losing to Anko. Alright, now, I guess it's time for me to win, huh? Naruto's boast makes Ina roll her eyes. With a hand on her hip, she raises her kunai at Naruto and beckons him forward. Bring it on. Bring it on. Come on, Mr. Ninja. If you're so tough, let's see if you can even get a scratch on me. At the very least, I know you have fun tripping over wires. Angrily, Naruto huffs up air, clenches his kunai, and clenches his kunai. He knew Ino was just trying to get a rise out of him, and it was very much working in, his, in her favor. Darting himself forward, Naruto decided to go on the attack himself. Often, he was used to being defensive given how Anko taught. Or, when he attacked, it would be rather pointless on her. Though, he knew he had to, had a more even match on his hands, attacking this time would be different. More than anything, he wanted to win. It was not just to have bragging rights over Eno. He wanted to prove himself in some way. Yeah, in his ninja classes so far, people poke fun at him. Say he is too advanced in some areas and too stupid in others. What he wanted to prove was he could be a ninja, period. All right, come on! A battle cry blurted out, and Arda lowers himself down into a slide. His feet kick up dirt, making a small cloud of it spew out around him. It was not enough to blind an enemy, but it was enough to make Enoch cough. Gotcha! Arda's plan was simple, but effective. Kicking his left leg at Eno's, he makes her fall into the dirt now, still in the middle of his slide. He stabs his kunai into the dirt, stopping himself. Pushing up onto his knee, he rolls himself over in front of Eno and brings his kunai down toward her arm. You were aiming a bit too high when I fell. This is how you do it. Stab. Good, uh, good old, uh, powerful stab. The kunai buries into Eno, and she cries out. Damn it. Tears start to form in Eno's eyes. Crap, I'm an idiot. Naruto stumbles back, looking at Eno, looking at Eno, holding her side in pain. She tried to move at the last second. Naruto could not stop his thrust. Kunai was sticking out of Eno's left hip. Oh. From her movements, it made it bury into her more than Naruto had even intended had ever intended. It was just supposed to be a cut, not a stab. I... 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 Naruto stutters over himself, overwhelmed with emotion, but mostly worry. Something in his stomach sinks. Real blood was in front of him. Looking at his palms, he even had a bit of Eno's blood on his hand. I... I didn't mean to. Eno falls back down and squeezes at her side. Damn it. Damn it. It hurts. Uh, it hurts. Naruto, get get help. Sakura finally walks into the scene, her eyes flushed with confusion. As she now, as she now, I would capitalize that. As she sees, oh wait, yeah, it didn't make that. As she sees, Nar you know, and Naruto both crying. Her female friend with a kunai in her side. What, what did you both do? Sakura fe freezes up. Uh, Sakura freezes. Up. Ino squeezes at the kunai in an attempt. Uh, and attempts to pull it out. 
feeling blood drip down her clothes as she does. Uh, uh, is pulling it out of... pulling it a bad idea? Children did not have medical training, so they could not be sure what was the right, right to do or not. You know, though, young, still was mature. Gritting her teeth, she grabs one of her flowers from the hoodie pocket and rubs it against the open wound. Uh, it's thinking so much. Gritting her teeth, she starts to pant, but slowly her breast calms. Her eyes even slowly, slowly lower, lowered like she was sleepy. Uh, yeah, that makes it better. Poisoning yourself to not feel pain. It works. It works. Sakura shakily takes a few steps toward forward and drops to her knees, lightly touching Ino's arm. What, what did you do? Did you just paralyze yourself? Ino nods. With a weary grin, and lays her head back on the dirt. The three children look between each other, and more blood drips from Eno onto the dirt. It's not... Eno breathes out slowly, looking over. Looking over. That's Naruto. Your fault, idiot. I... I I was the one who moved. Just... Get yourself together and... Go grab some help. Naruto sniffles and wipes his snot against the collar of shirt. Walking wearily, walking wearily, over to Eno, he brushes the back of his, of his hand against his nose, clean up any other snot. He's, he's got a lot of snot. He's a kid. He's a snot now. His breath. I, I. That's a lot of blood. We, we gotta stop the bleeding, right? Doctor nods slowly. And pants her pockets. I I don't got any bandages. I don't got bandages. I I am um, I can go get my mom. She'd know what to do. Sakura tugs on the side of her dress, unsure of herself what to do. Ino, however, coughs a little blood and onto herself. Her eyes already looking tired. Just help. Head turning to its side. She closes her eyes, breathing slower and slower. I... Naruto clenches his hands tightly, staring down at Ino. The only actions... The only action he could perform was running thoughts through his mind. What if I don't make it in time? I have... I have to do something. I must be able to do something, please. Please. Squeezing tighter and his shorts, Naruto pleads with himself. Move, do something. She's going to die. She's one of my only friends. Why aren't I moving? Stop watching move, please. Please just move already. Naruto's breath starts to grow heavy. He could feel his body shake. He felt cold, too, like he wanted to shiver. Something, help her, save her, please. At that moment, no one present at the scene could discern what exactly... What exactly happened... Naruto's bright blue eyes appeared even brighter for just a moment. Sakura could have sworn she saw white lines circle around his pupil and iris. Circling his pupil and iris. Yeah, that works better. Was any of it real? Sakura watched the blue flames brush against Ino's body, yet they did not burn her. The kunai fell out of her hip, and the wound closed. The only indication it was there was the leftover blood in its own hoodie and shirt. It defied logic. The three had come to learn from school and events. Then, Naruto fell to the ground himself. Though Sakura watched the two of them. Ino was the one to awaken first. Only after just a few minutes. What the... Ino pinches her arm, feeling the pain. Then lifts her shirt. Looking at the wound that was no longer there. But... What? Sakura, what happened? 
Dagra blinks slowly and looks at Naruto and then Eno. I mean, I I mean Naruto he he did something. You're okay. Eno nods slowly and wraps an arm around Sakura, giving her a half hug. That knuckle-headed idiot saved me, huh? <laughs> I wouldn't have gotten hurt if I didn't try to slip out. He beat me in that match. You know, bites at our lip and gives Naruto shoulder a poke. But now what? He's the one out who went out cold? Sakura nods, seeming to be in a sort of shock. Yeah, he, um... Some weird flames or chakra closed your wound. You know, rolls her eyes and gives... Sakura's hair a rustle, trying to keep the girl calm. I'm alright now. I know it's I know it's scary. I'm scared too, but I'm fine. Really. Look, I don't even have a scar. Looking down at the blood under herself, you know, feels the pressure of the scene around her. Uh, I think we may need to clean a lot of this up. I don't I I don't want our to get in trouble. Sakura turns her head slowly and nods. Right, right, he said your fault, but why would he... You know, clenches her fist and covers Sakura's mouth before she utters another word. You know exactly why I'd cause him trouble. If they heard about this... <laughs> you know, laughs, seeming more angry now. Then in shock, those bastards would hear the truth. That it was my fault and still blame it on him. They just use it as proof to tell their kids that he's a monster, Sakura. You know, sits on her knees and slowly stands herself up. And slowly stands up. To her surprise, not even the poison seemed to be affecting her. She used to, to numb the pain, her pain, but now her body felt completely healed. Like she had not even exerted energy today. Let's keep it between us for now. If Naruto wants to talk about it with us, he will. Letting the other villagers know, they'll just cause problems for all of us. So let me clean this crap up. Let's kick dirt over the mud. Uh, let's kick dirt over the blood. And, um, let me borrow your clothes or something. If I, I'll say I fell out of a tree and got mine ripped up. Sakura nods slowly and starts kicking her foot at the dirt to help conceal the blood. Her shock state, for better or worse, seemed to keep her from running away. Ino is not even sure if Sakura would remember the moment. <clears throat> but now, all Ino could do was help protect Naruto in a way she could. He, after all, just helped her. The cleanup job took the girls about an hour of time. Took the girls about an hour. You know, wanted to make their sparring area spotless, and so they did. That aside, you know, then had Sakura help carry Naruto back to their base. Luckily, from getting themselves muddy and messy at different times, Sakura had a few spare dresses at the base for you know, switching out of the blood-stained clothes. She. She starts up a small fire herself to get rid of them completely. You know, felt a little odd about it since it felt like she was doing something underhanded. Like from the VHS tapes her father would show her about crime situations. That was no crime. It was just helping a friend and avoiding... And avoiding her and Sakura's parents from yelling like nuts. It is always funny to me still that, uh, yes... It's canon in Naruto that they have VHS players at this time period. Everyone remembers when they watch Gara on VHS tape. <laughs> in the Chunin exams for their security cameras. It's always funny. Then, Naruto woke up. Just like Ino had thought, Naruto seemed to not remember his actions in saving her. Or he simply did not want to tell. Naruto, though, really did not know about his own power. His power. About the demon fox inside him. About the Un Uzumaki clan's natural healing ability.
still. He was relieved to see Eno was not hurt. Oh, what? I should probably add this part. About the demon fox inside him. About the Dewey's Machian's natural healing power. Alright. About the demon fox inside him, about the Uzumaki clan's natural healing ability, or about his eyes being taken from his head and put right back in it. Still, he was relieved to see Eno was not hurt. He was also a little embarrassed seeing Eno in something more feminine. Whatever path the three would take from now on, Naruto felt like his friends would not abandon him. Even Sakura seemed to shake off her shock when the three of them were all finally back on their feet. Even if scary situations could happen, the three of them could make it through. They really were his friends. Naruto felt like he could say the words to himself. He had real friends. The thought of Anko even crosses his mind as he watches Ino laughing, patting in her side. Patting her side. What was Anko to him? Just a teacher? Was she a friend? Also a friend? Treating him to meals, picking him up when he fell during training, and checking up if he was eating more than just ramen. When they first met years ago, he was not sure how their relationship would be, but Hanko ended up watching out for him, even more than the old man, oh, even more than old man third, capitalized, did. It was like she was someone that he could go home to. Freezing up in place, he looks between Ino and Sakura. Both of them had that, did they not? Parents, people to go home to. Nowadays, Anko was always there. She did her own missions still, but she kept checking up on him every night before he headed to bed. It was usually just to tell him not to only eat ramen, but she was there. Naruto. You know, smiles, looking back at him and waves her arm forward. Come on. We're heading back to Sakura's parents and where he works. So, can't stay out too long. Too late. Well, guess mine can uh, be like that too. If you want to stay long, you can. Oh, I meant R, not end. Come on, we're heading back. Sakura's parents are where he works, so can't stay out too long. I guess mine can be like that too. If you want to stay long, you can. You know, shrugs and starts walking onto the trail. Sakura, Naruto runs up behind the two. He gives a smile himself. He gives a smile. Yeah, I'll head back now. I'm glad you dealt with all that. <laughs> but I don't want to make my Anko mad. It's staying out too late myself, you know? That night was one Naruto thought about, thought of often, a motivator for him to have a greater resolve. To have greater resolve in the face of something tense. He had seen blood before, but not that much. He would still be a dorky prankster, sure, but he wanted to be able to protect the people in his life. In the ways he could, it ended up motivating him to train all the harder. Though as one day moves to the next, the years do as well. The next, the time Naruto spent at the Ninja Academy was one of strife, laughs, and sometimes learning. Even if it was hard on him, he started making a few connections. People like Shikamaru Nara would actually speak to him. Sometimes others would even get in on his dumb pranks. There was always a reservation still, even if people would acknowledge him in some way. Few would ever actually reach a hand out. People could be polite and say hello, and people could join in on a prank, though no one would ever invite him over to their house. No one ate with him. Only four people in his life did that. Aruka, Anko, Ino, and Sakura. He had some people in his life that would actually look his way. That would look his way. Even as years passed, they still kept it up.
It was not just some act. Finally, those two years passed. And the time of the Genin exam had come. Those who passed would be put into teams of three and be able to select missions to train further and earn money. Those who failed would either have to stay in school or wait for the exam next year to try again. Okay, I can stop at that part. Let me separate these parts properly. I guess I'll part this up in two. Yeah, yeah, so here. Here's where we're wrong. I think I just messed that up for myself, but uh... Naruto is a monkey in bold lettering. Oh, wait. Academy. Okay, now I have to do it again. <laughs> we'll get there eventually. Get there eventually. It'll happen. The dragons are coming. Okay, so. Part two. Part two. Part two, part two, part two, part two, part two. Part two. Yes. I want to show my friend Squidward to everyone in Bikini Bottom wearing a salmon suit. You're gonna bring me around wearing a salmon suit? Yes. Why not? I like salmon suits? Got some nice tasty salmon? Is it a squid? Is it a kid? We don't know. <laughs> but anyways, that's part two. I think I can combine those things together. That's like another 7,000 words for part two. So that puts into question, how long is this part unedited, untouched? How long is this part right now? Part three, because the rest of this should be part three. That's about 6,000 words. Okay, all of them are in the same length then. That's actually a pretty good way to divide it up. Do the, the old 777. Lucky seven. Though I think I might add an extra part in here. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go into writing mode real quick. Just real quick writing mode. In and out. I'm going to write a few paragraphs here, just to add a, a little more of an intro into this. 
Just wanted to replace the word tuning with the uh, proper name since it has a accent over the U.
You know, let's see what we got here. I want to throw in a different one. Okay.
Okay, so I wrote a few extra words. <laughs> just uh, just a few extra words. It was like an extra page, <laughs> but uh, I felt like it was a, a necessary, a necessary add-on, because I felt like we had uh, had some contextual context missing, but uh, not too much, not too much. Anyway, <clears throat> Naruto is a magi. Several chunin. We're chasing Naruto. Today was the day of the Genin exam. Naruto was doing everything to get himself prepared. That included playing some pranks, like defacing the stone monuments of the Hokage. It's just a prank. Stop whining. Naruto laughs loudly and leaps from building to building as a few chunin begin to throw empty paint cans toward the boy. Hey! Covering his head, Naruto feels a can wag his side, and he stumbles over, <laughs> falling face first on the dirt. A few of the villagers laugh in his direction, making Naruto smile even from making Naruto smile even from the slight pain. <laughs> and he said, and he says it doesn't work. Pulling himself up, Naruto runs forward, at the back of Zoran's jacket, pulling him back and onto his butt to get cut on a power pole. You gotta be kidding me. A random tuning ninja drops to the ground and scoffs, seeing Naruto start to uh, stop to pull. Uh, stuck to the pole, yeah, seeing Naruto. Stuck to the pole. Serves you right for being a. Serves you right, brat. I'm gonna bring you in. You're in now, alright? The man reaches his hand. The man reaches his hand out. And Naruto sighs. He tied his jacket around his waist because it was hot painting the stone faces in the sun. Now it was getting him into trouble. Still, he had defense. I didn't want to do this, but you leave me no choice. Weaving his hands together to make jutsu hand signs surprises the tuning, making, making them hesitate. Sexy jutsu! <laughs> A puff of smoke. What is left? With a puff of smoke, what is left in its wake is now a busty, nude blonde twin tail woman blowing a kiss toward the Junin di Junin's direction. The man's nose starts to bleed, and he turns his head away, yelling, Put, put some clothes on, miss. <laughs> Naruto chuckles at himself, the sexy, sexy jutsu always was a good distraction, cancelling the jutsu. The smoke shows his normal body again. Lydia Chunin, however, was still embarrassed, looking away. Now then, my exit. Freeing his ja jacket, Naruto leaps away, hearing shouts from the ninja behind him. <laughs> Got him. And then... A fist hits Naruto's head, and he flops onto the ground, looking up at Aruka. Naruto. Mizuki was right where I'd find you. Really, now. It's exam day, you know. The two stare between each other, and Naruto quickly weaves a few hand signs. Calipar Punch Jutsu! <laughs> a snake with brown and orange scales shoots from Naruto's arm, coiling itself into a ball, and it impacts right into Aruka's groin. <laughs> Wind blows, and silence falls beyond Aruka's soft groaning. As he holds a Self, Naruto slowly rubs the back of his head and stands up sheepishly. Okay, I still need to work on that one a little. I mean, it worked too well. Then, that gotcha. A white haired tuning places his hand on Naruto's shoulder, soft smile. His lips as he tries to keep himself from laughing at the sight of Aruka. <laughs> well, you sure do come up with different jutsu. But you know the rules, kid. Naruto sighs and rolls his eyes. Yeah, Mizuki sensei, I'll clean it up. What about the exam? Still foaming a little from the mouth, Aruka speaks up. Just just clean it and I'll call you when when it's your turn. Huffing air through his nose, Naruto nods. 
Fine, I'll get it done. Just don't forget. Our donor's quest to now clean up the mess he had just made stops by the academy first. More normal students were just getting there. Many were talking about the defaced faces, some chuckling about it. And a few frowning as they see Naruto. Though he did not care about that. He walks right on over to Sakura and Ina, who are happily speaking with each other. Ina, Sakura! And girls stop at in their tracks, and Ina gives Naruto a quick shove to the shoulder. <laughs> Good one with the paint! Naruto gives a thumbs up, but Sakura did not seem to enjoy it as much. Me and Sakura were just talking about what team we'd be want to be in. I know it's usually random, but it'd be cool if we could all be together. Sighing, Sakura tugs at, at the bag hanging on her side. I know you two don't take it uh, take a lot seriously, but you both actually practice the jitsu, right? You know, is the first to speak up, patting her chest proudly. Of course, I'm gonna pass with flying colors. It was easy to get used to it any. Easy to get used to anyway. Kind of like how I mix chakra into my flowers anyway. Fogger, yeah, I don't need any weather. I bet you can make a bunch of clones too, right now, you know. Now who laughs nervously, nodding in agreement. <laughs> Yeah, of course. We're, we're all gonna pass. Now, Anko even promised to have a special dinner with me tonight. Sakura, easing up a little, thugs at her goggles, leaving them atop her head. I don't need these anymore after today. Did you want to join me and Nino after the exam? We could celebrate at the hideout. Once again laughs nervously, the clone jutsu is still something you can never understand, but today. You could do it for sure, right? I mean, let's hang out tomorrow or something. I just gotta clean this stuff. Clean up this paint anyway. So I think you'll both get done ahead of me. Ugh. Oh, but come on, the goggles are cool. Keep them for now. Trying to use for them later. You know, shrugs and shakes her head. Come on, we can wait for you. You're gonna be a weirdo about it. Come join us when we're all done if you want. At least stuck around until our parents come pick us up. <clears throat> okay, 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 okay. Let's see, let's see. Come on, join, uh, come join us when we're all done if you want. At least stick around until our parents come pick us up. You know, touches her goggles now and brings them down over her eyes. Of course, I'm keeping mine. All right. Of course I'm keeping mine, so don't worry about that. I mean, they help looking at bright stuff at least. Naruto smile. Naruto smiles comes out a bit weary, his confidence shifting. Does his best to give a thumbs up. Yeah, of course. Let's get this done, guys. The both masks for sure, you know? And then... Naruto Uzumaki. 
Naruto had been cleaning paint all day. Now he was being called by Aruka into the exam room. It was the moment of truth, standing up in his now usual zipped-up orange outfit. He walks from his table and heads out of the class. Today was the day he could get rid of his goggles and put on real and put a real headband on. Today was the day he could put on a headband. He could put a headband around his forehead, not just a pair of goggles. Dusting off the dark blue shoulders of his jacket, he then adjusts his white collar, making sure he is ready. <sighs> I'll do it this time for sure, Aruka. Aruka groans silently to him. Silently at himself, and quietly walks into the room first. Sits down at the examiner table. Examiner's table. There, another teacher sat, along with the third Hokage. Naruto, showing his usual doofish nature, slides into the room and pounds on his chest, thrusting his pointy. Yeah, his pointy. He pours pointer finger at all of the examiners. Okay. You're all ready to see a real ninja in action, aren't you? None of them say anything for a brief moment. Only the third. Looks to Aruka and nods slowly. In the awkward silence, sitting there, the third looks at Naruto and nods his head, putting a smoking pipe down. Naruto Uzumaki, you're here to become a ninja of our village. Please take this seriously. As usual, for the final part of the exam, you need to perform the clone jutsu for us here. Please do so now. Naruto nods sagely and holds up his arms. Sure, sure. That boring old jutsu? I think you need to see something else. Hog bite jutsu! Out from Naruto's sleeve comes out two small snakes, both with large noses. They outstretch about five feet and bite Aruka right on the arm. Aruka, however, does not even flinch and just stares dumbfounded. Stakes were not wide. Aruka could fit both of them around his hand, so he grabs them both and yanks Naruto forward. Naruto. Aruka uses his yelling whisper voice, as so many teachers would when scolding. You understand what you're doing, don't you? Don't use these dumb jitsus. Jitsu, you've cooked up. We need to see if you can control your chakra, pro chakra properly. So, show us by making a clone already. Naruto sweats a little and waves toward them all. Come on, old man. You saw the clone jitsu a bunch already. I bet I could show you something you'd really love. Naruto. Naruto weaves a hand sign, and the third cocks an eyebrow, curious. Sexy Aruka jolting up from his seat, wax Naruto over the head. You idiot, I told you not to use that again. <laughs> Naruto rums at the back of his head and sighs. The examiner, the examiner, he did not know, just sighs, and the third's face does not change demeanor. Fine, fine, I get it, jeez. Ruka sighs and goes back to his seat, gesturing Nar to Naruto to start. Alright, so clone jutsu, right? Right, coming up, right, coming right up. Clone jutsu. <laughs> Weaving his hands together, again, chakra spews out from Naruto's body, enough that those in the room even feel a light gust of wind. And... Poof, above a smoke appears beside Naruto. And a clearest, showing a weight... 
A withered black and white Naruto on the ground, hanging his tongue out. Tongue out. The examiners all sigh, and Naruto... Uh, and the third Hokage takes a few notes down on the paper. Naruto, the third speaks, stroking his beard slowly. I'm afraid at this time your chakra control is not refined enough. Train more, and take the exam next year. Put in as much effort into those odd jutsus you create, I'm sure you'll give this one in no time. Naruka, if you bring in the next one. Silently, he nods, and Naruto stays. <laughs> uh, throat. Silently, he nods, and Naruto stays just as silent in the room. Aruka tenderly places a hand on Naruto's shoulder and guides him out of the room, his voice softer than before. Look, Naruto, just because you didn't make it now, you can still pass in another year. The third's right. You're creative. I give you that, but instead of playing pranks so much, focus on training. The jutsus I taught in class... Focus on training the jutsus I taught in class. Then you'll get this headband. Giving Naruto a pat on the shoulder, he leaves, going back to the classroom. Naruto could hear... Naruto could hear birds chirping as he walks outside and sits down on the swing outside the academy. Other students were talking and laughing, most showing off headspans as their parents guided them away. Sighing slowly, Naruto's hand squeezes at the swing's rope. What do I tell Anko now? I, I told her I could do it, but I messed up. Naruto's right. I kept making stupid jutsus instead of learning the basics. Biting at his lip, Naruto could feel his eyes getting glossy. He couldn't cry, though, so he bites the inside of his mouth to make sure he stops. I... there has to be some way. I can't just... wait a year. Looking off toward the gate, Naruto could already see you know, and Sakura walking off with their parents. They too had passed. They'll leave me in the dust. I'll never catch up. Uh, what voice do I want to actually give him? I already did it, but... <laughs> so, what will you do to change it? Naruto knew the voice. Without even turning around, it was another structure. One he saw with Aruka now and again. Though, most recently, just early day. Mizuki Sensei? Naruto gets up from the swing and turns around to see him. Mizuki. Like Aruka, is also a tuning instructor for the academy. He never talked to him much, but now and again Aruka brought him to eat ramen with both of them with them both. I mean, I can't do anything, can I? I have to wait another year. I messed up. Mizuki laughs and shakes his head. <laughs> Oh, come on. Everyone fails sometimes. But you can still make them change their minds, waiting a whole year. That's a bit much. Naruto sighs. Slowly, unsure of the words he was hearing, could he learn the clone jutsu that fast and show them he could do it? I don't know. I don't think I can learn it that fast. Maybe a few months. Brushing his white hair from his eyes, Mizuki rustles Naruto's hair, bends down to his eye level. Okay, you know what? You're Ruka's good friend now, aren't you? Aren't you? Me and him are buddies, so that makes us buddies. Rubbing the back of his neck, Naruto felt a little odd. Still, Mizuki had not done anything wrong to him. I mean, I guess. But what does that have to do with this? I still... I still can't learn it fast enough. Shaking his head. Mizuki gets a little closer to Naruto, so he could whisper in his ear. Well, <laughs> well. 
Then I guess you could learn a forbidden jutsu. You'd prove to everyone your skills if you could manage that. Mizuki's voice was tempting, whispering words that felt like they could, like they were caressing Naruto's mind. If he could become a ninja without having to wait a year, of course he would. Then, can you teach me a forbidden jutsu? Mizuki's lips creak into a smile, and he passes Naruto a piece of paper. I, I can't, but read this. It's a map of the Hokage Mansion. I marked where the Forbidden Scroll is. It has some jutsu in it. I'm sure if you learn one, everyone would be amazed. Naruto smiles back happily and snatches up the paper. Alright, thanks, Mizuki Sensei. I'll make sure to get I'll make sure to get it tonight. Show them all. Naruto starts running off towards the gate, waving his hand back toward Mizuki. I'll make sure to show you. As he leaves into the distance, Mizuki smiles happily to himself and lifts up and lifts the large windmill like blade he had on the uh, he had left on the ground. Oh Naruto. <laughs> I'm sure you won't disappoint this time. Then clang, clang, clang. The day had passed. With little event, as the night as night cloaked the hidden leaf, none would have thought to hear the alarm bells sounding. Joni ninja as well as Chunin all spread out, searching the area for one rogue element. Naruto, apparently, Naruto Uzumaki had taken a forbidden scroll from the Hokage Mansion. None knew how he could have possibly gotten past the defenses. With a steady guard in place and jutsu placed on the door. None should have been able to get inside without proper clearance. Somehow, though, Naruto did. The third Hokage was unsure what to do exactly, but the fact of the matter was Naruto could not be lost. He was unsure if this was just a child playing games, but whatever the case, Naruto was an asset to the village, knowing or not. Without him in the village, it could spark total war and then ruin the balance of power. Already, the Land of Wind was in a state of tension with the Land of Fire. Something like this could bring war to the villagers, to the villagers' steps. In an instant, smoking on his pipe, Kurizen gives a long sigh, looking out his office window. I never expected to be working this late at night, really. What could have gone wrong? Rubbing at the back. Rubbing at his beard, Hiruzen could only think the re could only think the reason Naruto would have taken their scroll was because of his failing, though he is unsure still just how the child could have broken into the place. Can I really blame anyone though? Tabbing his pipe into an ashtray. Hiruzen stands up and walks over to his cage of messenger birds. From what I know, only a select few really have really gotten close to him. I alerted who is here already. I'll have to send messenger birds to the checkpoints just in case. Then slam. Swinging herself through the doorway. Anko marches over to Hiruzen, grabs the old man's collar, shaking him back and forth. You idiotic moron. Where the hell is he? The woman was angry. That much Hiruzen could tell. He could easily shoo her away, but he lets her anger continue. I was wondering why the hell he never showed up for dinner. Aruka was the one who ha had to tell me he failed, but now I see a bunch of other ninjas hunting him down because of some stupid scroll. Finally, he risen lets another sigh pass his lips. And his eyes over at Anko's gaze. Miss... Mitarashi, please. Anko lets go of the third's collar, and he takes a few steps back, sitting da back down at his desk. I understand you're upset, but we simply, we're simply not, well, we're simply making sure Naruto does not leave the land of fire. I know if he stole the scroll, well, he did not do it alone. 
A few snakes crawl up Anko's back, hissing at Hirazen. Her eyes almost looked yellow for a moment in the dark. Maybe because of... her anger, but... it reminded Hirazen of his old student. I don't care about any of that crap. Someone obviously tricked that idiot. And I'm not going to let someone take advantage of him. That includes you. Tell me what you know. I'll find him. I already know all these ninjas. All these ninjas aren't going to be able to do it. Those idiots never deal with any kids. <clears throat> Looking down at his desk, here's in size again. Picks up a large remote. Clicking the power button, he... Motion send over to the large CRT TV, a bit away from his desk. A security camera spotted him, though he averted the ninja and jitsu. It makes it rather clear he's being used, to my understanding. Unless you've been training him far more than I thought. Welcome to Glimmer! Anko gives Hirazen an evil eye at his comment, so he clears his throat and continues. He left with the scroll about two hours ago, from what the footage states. So far, we've kept the search to the village and training grounds. I was about to send some messengers out to the outpost to make sure he doesn't cross the border. If someone put him up to this, they most likely want the scroll. Or want him. Or both. Or both of them. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That part's fine. Also, uh, thank you for the follow. Cat writes, I appreciate it. <clears throat> uh, I think I'm hurting my throat too much talking too much. <clears throat> it's only almost been four hours, it's okay. More proofreading. <laughs> I only have a few more pages left, and then we're to page 34. Just, just a few more. We're on 27 right now. Then another good old... slam. Anko slams her foot down and jumps out the window. Thanks, old man. Call off the birds, though. I know where the brat went. Just get some police jonin on standby. Tell Aruka to send them to our usual... With that, Hanko squats herself down against the roof of the manor, and leaps upward. Without wanting to cause any further delay, she infuses shock to the bottoms of her feet and begins to run up the village's stone faces. Don't comma there. Some paint was still coating them from an artist's prank earlier in the day. That brat. I swear. He gets hurt at all. Kill whoever. And gritting her teeth, Anko begins to weave a few hand signs. Finally reaching the top of the stone faces, she bites her thumb and presses her palm to the stone. Summoning rosy red. A white and red snake puffs from the smoke. Made from the jitsu. The snake is about six feet in length and no bigger than a, than a hand grasp in width. Alright, I let him play with you enough times. I think I know where the brat is, but point me in the right direction. Letting the snake coil. Coil around her arm, it lifts its head and points its red nose like a compass. You better be right. Jumping from the... Jumping from the faces. Anko heads right into the forest, going branch to branch. The training spots around this upper area were not real training spots. She just liked to use the area. Naruto played around the area too, she knew. It had to be where he ran to. Ran away. Had to be where he ran away. The problem was, if Naruto was... was tricked, it was most likely because it was by someone he knew. I swear, I'll wring Aruka's neck if it ends up being him. <laughs> you know, always good. A little strangulation between friends. <clears throat> I'm fine with whatever. It doesn't really matter to me too much. Though I appreciate you asking. <laughs> I 
I would say I use whatever I feel like at the time, but... You know. <clears throat> and I apologize ahead of time if I don't see your comment right away. I, uh, when I'm looking at my Word document, I have that full screen, so I can't see my chat right away. <laughs> I try to look back and forth, though. Anyway. <clears throat> oh, yeah! Naruto giggles to himself as the smoke around him clears. This thing really is the best. It's so much easier. How come they don't just teach this, us this stuff in school? <laughs> I bet Aruka will be jealous when he gets a look at, this, at the new Naruto. Leaning back against a tree, Naruto currently sits in a forest. A large scroll rests opened in front of him, resting at a part of the scroll dealing with different clone jutsu. Mizuki was right. With this, I really can. I can tell Sakura, you know, Anko, I can tell them all. I really can be a ninja. I don't need to take another year. Good enough already. I think that's fine. What part of that did I not like? Go. No, no, I just read it weird. It's fine. Wrong button. Control S. There we go. Yeah, you always gotta go with the flow. You try. And I know I have a pretty deep voice, so I don't worry about that part. <laughs> <clears throat> it's always those ironic parts where you're just like, well, I kind of like my voice, even if it doesn't fit uh, these pre-notioned images by social norms. But you know what? I still enjoy my voice, <laughs> so I'll take it where I get it. <clears throat> Or at least try to do dumb, weird voices where I can. Whatever works. I don't know if I liked the other Mizuki voice I was using, though. <laughs> and I'll try something else. So here you are! Mizuki brushes a hand through his white hair, dropping down from a tree. Naruto looks up happily at him, and Mizuki can only chuckle back at such a response. Really, I had a hard time finding you. I thought I wrote down where to meet, a, to meet after all. <clears throat> Naruto shakes his head. Uh, Naruto shakes his head and lifts up the scroll. Lifts the scroll? Get rid of that. Nah, it's fine. I wanted to make sure to read over the scroll right away. And I know no one else really comes up here anyway. Hmm, this one isn't doing it. I need something else. Where's my other music? Uh, I'm gonna throw in this one. Why not? Thoughts and ensnared for the sad music, even though it's not sad yet. <laughs> Mizuki nods in agreement, reaching behind his back, his fingers gently touching. Gently touch. His sharpened windmill shuriken, a large and powerful weapon made so it could fly through the air and stab right into someone's body to cause some good organ damage. Always need a little good organ damage, you know? <laughs> <coughs> yes, I... Bet you read plenty of that, didn't you? Naruto nods happily, still gazing over the contents of the scroll. You know, though, the village caught you on camera, Naruto. <clears throat> Live prankster camera. Live Naruto reactions. Naruto freezes up. Little sweat forming on his brow. What? What? They did, but... I did every... Mizuki nods, sadly, shaking his head. I guess my instructions were too hard for you, weren't they? You have to run away from the village. Stealing a forbidden scroll is a crime, after all. Nodding sagely, Mizuki waves his hand out, pointing off beyond Nar behind Naruto. But don't worry, I'll pretend like I didn't even see you. 
I'll give you a head start. Even tell the others you went the other way. Run, Naruto. Run away from here. I mean, the others all tree tree like crap anyway, right? Learn more from the scroll. Make a new life for yourself out there. Mizuki smiles happily at his little prepared speech. He practiced it a few times in the mirror earlier that day. His hand was now firmly grasping the hilt of the windmill shuriken. Fox or not, a swing of it, and a child would die for sure. The village would be thrown into chaos because of the fox releasing again. Mizuki could not help but lick his lips at the idea. Come on, Naruto. Don't freeze up. Just turn around. Go. It would be so much easier to stab him in the back, after all. You know, everything a nice, a nice normal, good person would say. <laughs> Do they have, like, some weird position where you can read for Audible? <clears throat> <clears throat> I've thought about trying to do, like, uh, some sort of audio plays before or something. But I feel like if I wanted to, like, actually do a serious audio play, I would want more people and probably sound effects. <laughs> I've, I've done it before, a long time ago in the past, but I also really don't like editing because it's boring. Editing audio is a pain in the butt, I gotta tell ya. <clears throat> it takes a long time. But doing random voice stuff can be fun. It is enjoyable. <laughs> Whenever I do the proofreading for uh, the stuff I write, I always try and try and do this where I read it all aloud and do my dumb little voices and stuff. <laughs> Even if a lot of the voices are the same, I have my fun. It's what I kind of do for D and D and stuff when I play that with my friends anyway. So, kind of works out. It's like practice. <laughs> <laughs> Biting at his lip, Naruto stares back at the school, at the school, and the scroll. Yeah, the whole entire school building just showed up. These are the mistakes we need to find. <clears throat> I always do the thing, every time. I always say to instead of at. I don't know why I do it, but I always I always do it. <clears throat> anyway. Ah, <sighs> oh, I feel like my hands going numb. Biting his slip Naruto stares back at the scroll and then at Mizuki. Uh, I the last thing he wanted was to be even more of an outcast. No conjunction here. He did not. He did not... Why is that capitalized? He did not want to be forced to leave the village. This was his big chance to be... F be uh, this was a big chance to finally be acknowledged by people. To not be hated by people as soon as he walked by. To just be a normal person. To be able to make friends. He got lucky with the people he had. What if they changed their minds? What if they replaced him if they found out he stole? I'll... I'll go. I... I have to go. Sitting himself up, Naruto rolls up the scroll and tries... Ties it to his back. I gotta go. Mizuki frowns, seeing Naruto tie the scroll up. Takes a careful step forward. What is it, Sensei? Mizuki gives a... Another well-acted smile, and shakes his head soothingly. You see... You should give me that scroll. We want not them to chase you even more. <clears throat> fear. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. No. <laughs> Naruto felt fear. Staring in Mizuki's eyes, it was different than before. Mizuki still had his hand behind his back, and his eyes, his eyes looked exactly like everyone else. The eyes of hate, 
the eyes of scorn. The eyes of people that would throw rocks at a child, that would avoid making even a little eye contact. Naruto jumps back and shakily grabs out his kunai from his tool pouch. Don't come any closer. I'm taking the scroll with me. You don't need it. Mizuki sighs a little, surprised, but mostly disappointed. <laughs> really, really. Is this how it's going to be? <laughs> Maybe I was wrong. Maybe you have two brain cells instead of just one. Mizuki's act falls to the floor. His fake smile leaves his face, and his scowl creeps across instead. Really, to think an idiot like you got a hold of, got hold of the demon. I was gonna be nice and kill you quickly, but really. Mizuki laughs into his hand and brushes his hair back. <laughs> you deserve it anyway. I'll kill you here and now, and make the thing inside you the village's problem. <laughs> And I'll get a nice forbidden scroll out of the deal. Taking out the shuriken with hatred in his eyes, Mizuki attacks. Swinging his shuriken forward, he attempts to cut Naruto's neck. Right away. But luckily, Naruto ducks down. And the shuriken impacts into the tree behind him. Really, you brat. You can't even die right, can you? <clears throat> Naruto crawls. <clears throat> yeah, that that that's that's the crawl sound. I don't need himself there. Naruto crawls away and rolls back to his feet. He could feel his heart racing. This is not simple training. This was death. Someone really wanted to kill him. It was not just Anko making a weird jokes or being hard with training. I'm... I'm not some demon. Naruto shouts out the words, and instead of attacking, he runs away. Jumping from tree to tree. Mizuki... F uh, uh. Follows, not falls. Jumping from tree to tree, Mizuki follows right away. He's faster? No, no, I don't know what I'm supposed what I'm doing, and he's trained. Snap. A branch snaps under Naruto's foot, and he falls right to the ground. Damn it. The pain in his back shoots through him, but it recovers quickly. He always was quick to heal. Getting back to his feet. And knees, Naruto covers his mouth and pushes up against a tree. Calm down. Mizuki, on the other hand, jumps right overhead, cackling like a crazy person. He seemed to be. Though he keeps going, jumping from branch to branch, till Naruto can no longer hear him. Did... did he really get... Naruto! Anko squ squats right next to Naruto, her face close to his. He keeps his hands clasped over his face to not make a sound. Naruto. Anko... Anko speaks the words softly and places a hand on his cheek, slowly lowering both his hands from his face with her other hand. What are you doing? You look terrified. Suddenly, the anger that had been building in Anko's in uh, in Anko felt like it had been like it had left completely. She was just glad Naruto was safe, though something else turned in her now. Maybe a new anger. But she was not mad at Naruto. Who did this to you? Why'd you steal the scroll? Naruto bites the inside of his mouth, trying to stop tears from coming from his eyes. Eh, trying to stop. I can just say from coming. Naruto bites the inside of his mouth. Trying to stop tears from coming. Bringing his goggles down in front of his eyes to cover up his tears. He sniffles. He sniffles his nose. I, I, I failed the exam and I wanted to pass. 
I, you know, I, I wanted to keep up with Sakura and Ino, and I wanted to impress you too. Anko gently grabs at Naruto's hand. But when I learned I failed, I just, I felt like I couldn't even show my face to anyone. Naruka, you, both of them, and then Mizuki, he told me about the scroll. I was just happy. I happy when I thought I could actually pass instead of repeating the year. I even learned one of the jutsus in the scroll, but Mizuki... He... And then... <laughs> drip. 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 It all happened so fast. Hold up. Hold up. I need a... I need a banger. Uh, I will do her out goodbye. <laughs> It all happened so fast. Naruto was just explaining what happened. Then Mizuki's shuriken zipped through the air. It looked like it was about to hit Naruto right in the head. But Anko straddled herself over Naruto. Her hands pressed against the trees and took the attack. Right in front of him. Her blood drips from her lips onto his clothes. The windmill shuriken was sticking right out of her back. Words were not coming to him. Anko, however, simply brushes her finger against his cheek again and smiles with blood on her lips. <laughs> so this is the jerk that's been causing you trouble, huh? Mizuki laughs loudly, throwing his head then onto the ground. <laughs> I can't believe this. Everyone getting in my way today. Twisting his shoe into the headband, he takes out kunai from his pouch and spins it around in his hand, backhanding it. Naruto Uzumaki. <laughs> you must feel special, right? Being protected by a special Jonin. Though I bet you don't know why she's actually protecting you. Anko's eyes go wide, and she pushes herself up, grabbing the windmill shuriken from her back. You ass. Ripping the shuriken from her own body, she feels the warm blood rush down her back. You feeling proud that I let you get a hit on me? I can close this kind of wound fast enough. Wobbling a little in place, even with the wound closed, Anko could not give herself more blood. Oh no, too loud. Too loud. Uh, what else do I want? Sure, why not? Once we part ways. <laughs> Cracking her knuckles, regardless, she lifts her head. If you're here to kill us, stop chatting and get to it. Licking his lips, Mizuki seemed to instead be relishing the reactions. Oh no, Miss Special Jonin. I think instead I'll enjoy the show. Jumping back up into a tree, Mizuki yells down toward Naruto. Naruto, the real reason the village treats you the way they do? The reason why a special Jonin would even think of protecting you? <laughs> Laughing loudly, Mizuki starts hopping from tree to tree, trying to look for any openings in Anko's defense. Even if weakened, she still is a Jonin. You are the nine-tailed fox, Naruto Uzumaki. Having his foot slammed down on a branch, a little behind Anko, his eyes fixate on Naruto, trying to gauge the boy's reaction. You simply being born killed so many in the village. Did you know that? Ruka's parents, so many parents, children, so many died all because you were born. And then they sealed the fox inside you. <laughs> You're just a pawn for the land of fire. A bomb they can tie up and throw at any enemy. If they ever need to get rid of someone, no one cares about you. You're just a political token in their little game, Naruto. Throwing his kunai toward Naruto, Anko's snake comes from her sleeve and deflects it with its scales. Of course. Getting loud again, Mizuki pulls out another kunai, this time with a flash tag on it, 
Lord Third, oh how kind he was. He told everyone in the village to never tell you a thing about your birth or your parents. Great guy, isn't he? And then... <laughs> flashbang sound. <laughs> the kuna falls through the air. And blinding light flashes. Not even Anko expected it. Squeezing her eyes shut, she grabs hold of Naruto's collar. Listen up. I don't care what you're thinking right now, but I want you to be safe. I'm going to hold them off. Run. Using what strength she could, Anko's snake also grab at Naruto's collar. Five snakes grab hold to brace Na Anko's body with extra strength. Then pulling back, she swings Naruto into the air. Off into the distance. Get back into the village! Naruto falls through the air. He falls and thinks. He could still see. His eyes were protected because of his goggles. It makes sense. Biting at the inside of his mouth, he could taste blood. Many thoughts were in his mind. But the forefront was, did Anko really care? What if Mizuki was lying? I, I gotta run though. I don't want to die. Spitting himself in the air, Naruto lands on a tree branch and starts bolting himself forward from tree to tree. He had to get further away, toward the village, toward anywhere. Where am I anyway? Looking all around himself, he could not tell what part of the forest he was even in. He could only keep running, adjusting the scroll at his side. He keeps running. Naruto! Anko's voice comes from behind him. Naruto keeps his pace, but Anko, qui Anko quickly catches up. Holding her hands out. Quickly, give me the scroll, Naruto. Naruto felt something wrong. Anko was right next to him, jumping from branch to branch. Though her eyes were off. Why'd she want the scroll? Why do you need the scroll? Did you take care of Mizuki? We need to get to the village, don't we? <laughs> He's done with. We're going the We're going the right way. I just want to hold the scroll so their thread doesn't fr so Lord Third doesn't freak out. Yeah, so Lord Third doesn't freak out. Something still felt wrong, not strong, wrong. Though it's a very strong feeling of wrong. <clears throat> yeah, I have water by me. <laughs> I've just been at this for four hours now. <laughs> That's all. <clears throat> it's not too bad, though. Oh no, it's not supposed to have two R's. <laughs> there we go. Something still felt wrong. The odd smile on her lips. Something else. Naruto squeezes his eyes shut and thinks over Anko's own words during training. Observation is the most important part of battle. If you're blind, smell. If you're smellless, see. It probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense like that, but I'm saying use your senses. You're a ninja. You need to see what's in front of you and figure out if it's real, a trap. That goes for combat or normal stealth mission. Man, I suck at this lecture crap. <laughs> Naruto stares at the at Anko now, and he notes that she has no blood on her. Also, her back has no hole in it. <laughs> no holes in it. And no blood. Uh, and no blood stain. Even with medical jutsu. He learned about in school. Nothing would prepare clothing that he knew of. Uh, apostrophe there. The other ones are small. That's fine, too. <laughs> of course, the eyes, too. The eyes told him enough already. He was right to doubt right away. You're... He had to do something. Was Anko even okay? Pressing his heel against a tree branch, he pivots and pushes himself like a missile right into Anko's gut. 
You're not her. And then... Mizuki falls onto the ground, slamming back against the dirt. Damn it. Spitting some blood to his side. He slowly stands up and chuckles. You know, the, the good amount of spitting up anime blood. <clears throat> you brat. <laughs> I should have given you more credit. Just let me kill you already. Naruto stands on a tree branch above and looks down at Mizuki. He was hurt now, too. He could escape for now. He could escape now for sure. Naruto! The Rio Anko now walks from the forest, a kunai in her hand. She stares toward. She stares at Mizuki angrily. <laughs> there you are, you bastard! What are you afraid of me? Good choice! <laughs> Mizuki scowls and looks up toward, Nar toward Naruto, taking out a kunai of his own. I don't have time for you. I just want to kill him. Naruto. Anko, Anko calls out, waving him off. I told you, get out of here. I'll handle him. Smiling with some blood in her teeth, Anko then says something that surprises even Naruto. Please, for me. Mizuki laughs and brushes his hand through his hair again. Turning around to face Anko. <laughs> what a load of bull. Please? Why tell a thing like that, please? <laughs> Least of all from you. You know what? I guess I can kill you first. You were getting in my way anyway. I can tell you barely have any chakra left anyway. What? Had a mission earlier today? Naruto, Naruto freezes up again. He had no idea what to do. Anko could tell he was scared, but she needed to make sure he got away. She did have a mission earlier in the morning. The limited chakra she had was used on Searing Snake to close the windmill shuriken wound. Ah, you piece of shit. Spitting blood to her side, she squeezes her kunai and beckons Mizuki forward. I can take you on fine. So, don't ever tell me... How to talk to my kid ever again. Mizuki flinches at the comment, and Naruto does as well. Clearing his throat, Mizuki keeps his smile on. Uh, keeps his smile on, and spins his kunai in his hand. <laughs> kid? What the hell circus did I run into? Kid. Kid. Your kid. <laughs> what the hell is that? Let's see. He's got two snot-nosed brats, Saruka... Is that what? The daddy? And you're playing mommy to the little fox? Ah, you all make me sick. Running forward, Mizuki thrusts his kunai toward Anko. She deflects the first thrust and pushes him back. Mizuki, however, twists his heel and spins around, kicking Anko right in the gut, making her spit up more blood onto the ground. <laughs> Leave now, and maybe I'll let you live. You need a blood transfusion at this point, Miss Snake. Wobbling more, Anko grabs at her knee and squeezes it at it hard. She could not let herself fall over. Yeah. Mizuki turns his head in wonder, not expecting her to agree. Even Naruto looked like he was about to cry from it. Anko, I... Naruto shakes his head, biting his lip harder. R really, you'll die doing something stupid like this. If you need to go, then go. I wasn't finished, you brat. Anko coughs up more blood onto the ground and wheezes at some of the air. Mizuki laughing at her attempts to stay standing. Shut up, you dickhead. With your shitty ass laugh, and let me finish my goddamn sentence. Yeah, he's my kid. Wiping some blood from her lip, Anko straightens her posture and stands tall. He doesn't have a mom, so yeah, I'm his mom. I've taken care of that little brat plenty. Call myself that. Mizuki rolls his eyes, sighing into his hand. <laughs> wow, you sound like you hate him more than I do. Hear that, Naruto? Feel even... Shut the hell up. 
Anko stomps her foot on the ground, wheezing loudly. Naruto! Calling out to her would-be son. Anko looks Naruto dead in the eyes. You're a great ninja to me. You haven't passed yet? I don't give a damn about that. You've put in plenty of effort training with me. Panting through her words, Anko makes sure her voice is good and loud. You don't give up. Even when it's hard. You had plenty of time to cry, but you kept trying to make connections. Connections? And you know what? You damn well did. A little glossy- a little glossy-eyed now. Anko bites at her lip and shakes her head, trying her best to get her point across. Taking you out to eat, checking in on you, training you. None of that was ever a mission. The third never even knew I was teaching you till he caught us eating Dongo that one time. Look, I can call you a brat because you are a brat. You're a kid and you think spoiled. But who cares? You deserve it now and again. You act like you're some burden to me just when you ask me out to eat. To hell with that. I like eating with you. You don't have a mom, and I don't have a whole lot of anything anymore. So why don't we be a nice fucked up family for each other, yeah? That's what I thought. I don't care about that stupid fox in you. I don't care about your bread. <laughs> so stop standing around and listen to what your mother tells you already. I don't care about that. Yeah. That. Make sure that's the right words. I don't care about the stupid fox in you. I care about you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was the point. I just read her off. <laughs> I care about you. That, that, that was the point. <clears throat> Me reading it now. I don't care about the stupid fox in you. I care about you, you brat. So stop standing around and listen to what your mother tells you already. <laughs> that's the right one. Naruto's palms were sweating. Mom's spaghetti. Yeah. But a calm was there. It was not what he was expecting. He barely saw Anko show emotion. Emotional and emotional care. She was rough. Rude. Swore a lot, even around kids. <laughs> she tried her best, though, to be nice, to make sure he ate okay. And to take him out to eat when she did not need to. To train him. A messed up family is still a family. I need to... Gritting his teeth, Naruto takes a deep breath and tosses the scroll down to the ground. He felt it. Mizuki was a wimp. He was using whatever he could to get an advantage, but he could take him. Mizuki, I'm going to take you down. <laughs> Mizuki laughs, watching the scroll fall to the ground. <laughs> what bullshit did you work in to him, Anko? Come on, Naruto, you can't beat a Chunin. I'd like to see you even try. Laughing, Mizuki looks up toward Naruto. Naruto, holding a hand sign with chakra surrounding him. What? What is that? Visible chakra? Anko smiles. And falls back onto the ground. Huh. Well, fuck. Go get him, kid. Shadow clone jutsu! <laughs> and then nice, uh, nice good old... I guess I could do what I did last time. I could do what I did last time. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta do it again. I gotta do it again. Hang on, this is important. <laughs> this is of course important. Important to everything. <clears throat> yeah, about that volume's fine. Not too loud. Give me a teeny. A teeny bit. <clears throat> Who cares about the copyright claim? Then poof. The Mizuki's eyes. The tree branches, the ground around him, everywhere was clones as far as he could see. <laughs> You've gotta be kidding me. 
Mizuki scoffs and shakes his head. The kind of crap can't... This kind of crap can't trick... Slamming a fist right into Mizuki's stomach. One of the Shadow Clone attacks. Yep. Uh, what the... They're real. No way, this brat. From behind a group of clones, Anko coughs and yells out. Yeah, that brat of mine. He made full-on real Shadow Clones. Several of their fists now pound into Mizuki. His screams being heard far and wide throughout the forest. Fist after fist pummel him into the ground till he is beaten black and blue with a swollen face. Falling onto his face, he groans in pain, and Naruto drops to the ground, releasing his jutsu. A smoke cloud of clones disappear. And Mizuki lies unconscious, unable to move. And that's... hurting my mom. Falling onto the ground, Naruto too lays unconscious. Too much of his own chakra, used at once. Okay, just, just, just need to throw that in. <laughs> you know, always have to throw it in. We love it. We love it. Uh -uh. We love it. It's great. <sighs> Anyways. Bird sounds. Chirp, chirp. Chirp, chirp. Naruto's eyes slowly open. And his head was on something soft. The morning light was a bit blinding, though. Hey, sleepyhead. <laughs> I think that's what people say. Anko stares down at Naruto, with a smile on her. Still slightly bloodstained lips. No need to rush. He used a lot of chakra. He's down for the count. I even tied him up. <laughs> Blood loss and all, he didn't manage to hurt me too bad. Eh, too bad's fine. Naruto slowly scoots himself up. And sits at Anko's side. You're really okay? You're really okay, then? Holding on her side, she nods slowly. Huh. I think I'm going to the hospital when we get back. But I kinda need you to help me get back with that asshole. Narda nods and looks Sanko over, noticing right away. Her headband was not on her forehead. Hey, under your bangs, what happened to your headband? Anko smiles smugly and shrugs her shoulder. I guess it found a better place. I don't know where it went. Naruto sighs and shakes his head. Looking at his goggles, he can now see in Anko's hand. Hey, wait a second. Why did you take my goggles? Just because you lost the, your headband does... Then... Ting! Anko flicks Naruto's forehead. A metal ting ringing as she flicks it. I guess I need to spell it out for you, right? I'm an examiner sometimes. So? You passed. You did it, Naruto. You made clones. You're a real Genin now. Naruto pauses and slowly grabs at his forehead, feeling the ninja headband wrapped around it. Anko took it off her own, took off her own to put it on him. His eyes start to well with some tears, and his lips wobble. He, you, I really did it. You mean it for real? Even though Naruto's excitement and emotion die down, his eyes looking down. Even with some weird demon thing in, even me, in me, even with thing. Flicking his forehead again, Hanko sighs. I never cared about any of that crap in the first place. Look, you're my kid and stuff. Hanko's cheeks blush slightly and she rubs at her neck awkwardly. Don't make me say that junk again. I don't care if you're a snake dressing up like a girl. You're Naruto. You're my Naruto. 
You get it already? Because you have something inside you doesn't mean I'm gonna hurt, hate you. <laughs> Some asshole like that guy may try and use you, Naruto, but you'll find people too. Like me, like Aruka, like those girls you tell me about. Even if people want to live in the past all the time. Anko laughs at her own words and shakes her head, wiping a tear from her own eye. You'll find people willing to take the first step toward change. People willing to do what's right, put a smile on a dumb face of yours and go back to being... Thada, the. People are willing to do what's right. No, no. The other one is right. <laughs> Read it wrong several times. It's okay. You'll find people willing to take the first step toward change. People willing to do what's right. So put a smile on that dumb face of yours and go back to being a, a dorky kid already. <laughs> Naruto frowns a little, adjusting his headband. I mean, I was pretty cool just now. Rolling her eyes, Anko gives Naruto's shoulder a shr A shove. Not a shrug, a shove. That's just what a dork would say. Hopping up to his feet, Naruto groans and messes up his own, messes up his hair. The whatever, box and random junk, I can worry about that crap some other time. I'm a Genie, I really did it. Pumping himself back up, Naruto pats himself on the chest. I even took out a rogue tuning. I bet I can become a Shinin pretty easy myself. Naruto. Anko speaks up with a strict tone, making him straighten out. As a special Jonin, I'm giving you your first mission. Naruto nods and shakes his head and speaks firmly. Just tell me the details, you know? With a soft sigh, Anko waves, her hand, waves to her side. Help carry me to the hospital, idiot. <laughs> and make sure to tell that shitty old man, third. Be sorry, alright? Naruto groans and scoops under our Anko's arms, helping her to her feet. Even with the height difference, he made for a good cane. Come on, do I really gotta say I'm sorry? Anko glares to at Naruto, and he quiets down. Good boy. Aruka hopefully got the message. My message. I don't think we can carry the jerk back. Naruto looks at the switching unconscious Mizuki and shrugs. I mean, he's probably gonna stay out cold. Anko shrugs and points her finger forward. Well, whatever. The, the village is that way. Hopefully we'll run to someone on the way. And end credits scene the uh the anime closing plays and uh the crowd uh, the crowd cheers for their pilot episode of naruto <clears throat> the crowd goes wild so yeah that is uh that is the end of the third part then for our segmented parts so it can fit on deviantart properly since deviantart likes to do the funny uh only ten thousand words can fit <laughs> So let's see. I need to go back up here. There we are. Save that. Yeah, that was about 7,000 for each part. Like 7,500 words for every single part. For the full... What was the final word count? Final word count was... <coughs> 22,146 words at... 34 pages. That is a lot. And that is, uh, that is a bit. I've made longer stories, but I've made shorter stories also. <laughs> okay, there we go. All three parts have been proofread and edited. At least the first time. <laughs> At least the first time. And it only took 
roughly four hours and 30 minutes. Just gonna write to the person who commissioned this. If you tell them that it's all good now, get your American. Okay. Oh. Oh. There's always that uh that hit of adrenaline, the uh the good old dopamine endorphin rush of going I finally completed it. Now all I got to do is uh just post it to the old Deviant Art page and uh and Patreon page, I suppose. And uh that is all good. Then I can start whatever the next commission is. Ugh, uh, doing two Naruto fanfics back to back. Maybe not the best idea, but uh, but I did them. <laughs> you know, that being said, the other one was Stranger. This one was kind of a normal commission. I usually don't get too many normal stories. <laughs> usually I get the, the stories that have some sort of, uh, you know, weird thing in it. <laughs> This one was more normal. This one was kind of just like a, a what-if story for a different version of Naruto. If events happen differently. It was like a good old uh, Dragon Ball time travel series of events. That's probably a bad example, but uh, for popular example. <laughs> for popular example, that works. Let me turn that down a little bit. A little teeny bit. <clears throat> Anyways, it's been a few hours now. <sighs> I got done what I wanted to get done. So I'm going to end stream here for the day. I might come back on later and stream a game or something. I don't know. I, I wasn't sure how long this is going to take. So I might hop back on and finally start up Neo Tweeny again. I still need to do that. Uh, tomorrow I might start on a new commission. Uh, someone was just emailing me today about a possible... I think I was gonna do, like, a 15k one. So that might happen. I think that one's gonna be a Pokemon fanfic. I haven't done one of those in a bit. So, uh, we'll see how that goes. <laughs> that one might be a Pokemon fanfic I'm not allowed to proofread by Twitch's terms of <laughs> service, but, uh... It is a fanfic that I can write, but I can't read for legal reasons. But, uh, yeah, it's one of those Pokemon fanfics, but... <clears throat> but you know, it pays well, and we do like to make money. I think the only other ones I have, uh, someone was telling me that they possibly wanted to do, uh, two stories, 5k ones for... Uh, for romance stuff, not sure how that will go. But, uh, that might also be one to do. Not sure how that'll go, though. But, I look forward to it regardless. I mean, honestly, if I can get all of the commissions together, that'd be, uh, be a pretty good group up. I could probably get those all finished in a few weeks if I actually keep up my normal schedule, which hopefully I will keep to. <laughs> Uh, I try to at least stream every weekday. Uh, I like to try to stream a video game one of those. One of those days. One of those days, usually on the weekends. Uh, where I just do like an actual game series where it's just a video game only. 
sometimes when I'm writing, I play a video game at the same time, but, uh, just, just adding that in. Either way, for anyone who popped in, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed me suffering through proofreading my own writing and dying inside at my, my terrible mistakes. I try not to critique myself too heavily when I do it, but I do have to correct the mistakes I find. <laughs> As I relentlessly see myself making the same mistakes over and over again. One day, I will learn that two and at do not need to be used interchangeably. <laughs> Usually you want at, especially for third-person stories. Usually you don't want to, but sometimes it happens. Unless the context, you need to use two, but that's besides the point. Anyways, remember to eat dinner and drink water or something. I don't know what time zone people are in, but whatever time zone you're in, do the thing that you're supposed to. I'm gonna go. So, bye. And all that good stuff. Bleep. Bloop. Away. <laughs>